hopefully it's uh, working. We'll see. Moment of truth. Did this actually send? We'll see. These are always the joys of. Right. Oh, did I write this message somewhere and then turn it off? Because you didn't send it. Very likely. Typing, we'll go live and I'll start talking. Yeah, we're live right now. All right, great. The internet's hey. watching. Hey, yeah. folks, the internet is here. And uh, so are we. I'm Stephen Hagen, and this is Mark Caterberg, and we are part of St. Lotus. And we're here for something a little ad hoc and different tonight. So, four of us that are regulars in St. Lotus are in a Discord draft right now. Uh, you can find our Discord through our website at stl or St. Lotus.org. Is that right? Oh, yep, okay. St. Lotus.org. And uh, But we're in a Discord draft right now, and rather than do those games online like most of them are, the four of us that are in it decided we're going to get together and have pizza and have uh, families around and have a good time and play some matches. So we're getting ready to go live with our first match here, which is Brandon versus Eric. Now this one's interesting because this is a um, rematch of the finals That's true. <laughs> from the last actual St. Lotus. We literally had to switch the names. Yeah. Uh, so Eric looked like he molded a six. Yep, he had a he had a fast bond hand going on, and now there's Brandon. a I saw a monolith in the other hand. Yeah, so, so Eric is on um, Zerta infinite mana combos, and Brandon is on some fast bond enchantress shenanigans. Oh uh, yeah, let him yeah, start, let him start. And we've given them the go ahead to go, as you just heard. Uh, so. so yeah, the, I think that the key cards here. I mean, obviously we have the deck list. Uh, with us as well somewhere around here. Uh, so we have we'll exploration. We have Mox land exploration. So there was no fast bond, but we had an exploration. Um, there might still be a bond in hand there too, though, actually, I think I saw. Oh, uh, there definitely is a fast okay. bond in hand. That maybe he only didn't have enough mana to justify it. Yeah. But. So I saw Brandon's deck in action last night in one of the first uh, matches, and it is pretty explosive. Like, drawing his whole deck on turn four type explosive. That's at ridiculous. Times. Uh, I know he said he had turn one wins available. Or maybe other than tuna, actually. Yeah, we, we've had we there are there are eight drafters, obviously. Right. Four of us are here, so we're gonna be watching a bunch of the matches tonight, but there's many more to play out. Right. So uh yeah, Levine and I were actually I, I'm the other artifact drafter at the table, ish. I'm in the time vault deck. Uh, he and I were just like fighting over all of the blue artifact interactions. Um so like I know his deck pretty well, mostly because it's all the cards that I wanted that he got around before I got. Uh, and I, I discussed, uh, Brandon and I have discussed his deck a lot throughout. So. His deck seems kind of like the answer to where we think the format is headed, where he's running a lot of cards that interact with uh, that interact with Planeswalkers. Like he got Questing Beast in the seventh round of the draft. Yeah, just he decided ridiculous. not to main it, though. So, uh, yeah. Emery, but, okay. So Brandon is really on this idea that, like he said the other night, we had some interesting late-night combo in the Discord, mm -hmm. and... Brandon had said that he is of the mind that you should never draft a combo piece before round three at this point. Yeah, he's I, I disagree with that. Yeah. But uh, he's really on that that every card needs to... like Things like eggs and decks that sometimes just dirtle and do nothing, he, he's definitely down on those. And that every card needs to be moving you forward. Mm -hmm. um, but this Enchantress deck can draw... That's a Cetacean Champion. So, okay. so Cetacean um, Champion, when yeah. it has Heroic, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, then not Heroic. When you cast an Enchantment, it gets a oh. plus one, plus one okay. counter. Okay. And you get to draw a card. So it's an Enchantress that gets okay. bigger. That's ridiculous. But yeah. it has, does it have to be targeted or no? No. It does not it's just straight Enchantress. Okay, cool. Um, I guess we have, we have Scryfall here. Yeah. We can, we can so, be helpful. So it's a three-mana one, right, as opposed to a, like the other ones. Yeah. But it is a, a threat, right? Um, constellation. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's Constellation, not Heroic. Got it. And uh, so, yeah, so, but he is definitely very explosive. Now, this is interesting because we have long talked about the Enchantress plan, right? And our coverage is it viable. And Air, uh, Brian Nerd has long said he thinks it is. He's been looking for the shell. Yep. We had two enchantment decks in this draft. One of them was Boggles. Um, Excitingly, we have uh, Emery casting Pentad Prism uh, using a Glimmer Void there to get it up to two mana. And then a Grim Monolith as well coming into play. Yeah. Off of the ancient, and ancient the, Z tomb. the Zerta still sitting over there, but if he brings the Zerta in and can cast it, mm -hmm. he can go infinite mana right now. And right now he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is more than enough. Yeah. All he needs is he needs uh, two to activate it, plus three to put it in his hand, and three to cast it. Right. So he'll need a total of eight mana, and he is one over that limit right now. So next turn he's infinite mana, uh, assuming that he doesn't just lose the game. Yeah. So does he? I mean, he doesn't need two to activate because he. The, he taps the monolith. 
Uh, yeah, right. the monolith is some of the nine mana. He needs six mana prior to the monolith. Correct, and then right. two to untap the monolith. Right. So once you get the monolith going, you're, you're golden. Yeah, monolith is net positive, but it, it actually is one extra net positive right. as well. So we have a Heliod out here. And that uh, obviously combos with Walking Ballista. So the... uh, He does not have Walking Ballista. Walking oh. Ballista is on Eric's list. So uh, it was grabbed this... as a ma infinite mana outlet. Why is he running this Heliod? Um, as just a general large amount of value. He gains a lot of life off Courser. He gains a lot of life. And it's just going to pump his creatures and make them a lot bigger. Definitely interesting. Um, so yeah, so it's basically going to do things like every enchantment he plays... Uh, when he has, uh, or Landy plays when he has Corsair out, it's going to make them bigger, and he can just get a big fatty through. Okay. Out of his main list, I, this was the card I was least high on, I think, out of his main list. I think he had some stuff on his board that might have been better served. Okay, so he has the fast one in play, and he cast something there. I can't quite make out what that uh, is. That, that is a... Um, um, a crop rotation. Crop rotation. Got it. And he's got three saucy crop rotation targets. So okay. he's got uh, Sarah Sanctum. Sure. That's, he's got that's Hall of found right now. He's got Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Yeah. And there was one other in the list that was pretty saucy. That Maybe I, Bog? No. Um, it's it's more of a winning instead of a defensive um, yeah, type let me, card. Let me actually just post here in the Discord the draft list because I think yeah. that uh, I think anybody might care about this. Uh, so let me jump over here and throw it in. There you go. All right. Let me so see. Let me see those. I'll put up right here. Okay. Uh, Obviously, this isn't like... Krakus. He's got Krakus, which is what it is okay. more defensive. Yeah. Uh, I'll actually hand this to you. Do yeah. you keep it over there? You might be able to push back the audio setup. Yeah. We're obviously, like, throwing this stuff together right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hear my nine-year-old talking to the players in the other room. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a pretty relaxed setup. Oh, yeah. This is not exactly a St. Louis. Oh, and quality. Yavamaya for his Nissa. So he's oh, got nice. four saucy targets for crop rotation. Sure, sure. Is that the... That's a flip card, right? That's right there in play? Uh, that he cast out? Yes, that is Katilda. Katilda. Yeah, Dawnheart Dawn Martyr. So sure, power toughness is equal to the number of permanents. They control their spirits and or enchantments. Huh. All right. Uh, and it's Flying Life Leak. This, this card seems bad, but I mean... His no, deck. it seems really good. Okay, okay Especially enough. the flip side. Look, 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 the flip side does, too. Sure. Uh, we but we're picking up, I think, the... We got Zerda, oh, wow. we got Mana. Yeah, if you have another creature in play, she's ridiculous yeah. on the backside. So Zerda comes down, infinite mana. Okay. And Walking Ballista. There it is. So yeah, the Walking Ballista that Brandon wasn't able to pick up, exactly. Eric did. Yeah. So in case you didn't didn't catch that, Zerda came into play. It, uh, de it decreased the cost of the Monolith to activate. Yes. Uh, and that allowed for infinite mana to be created. The infinite mana then was pumped into Walking Ballista to, and made it over 20, which then reduced Brandon's life total down. So the walking the mono or the monolith normally untaps for four, right? Uh, this made it untap for two, and then it allows you to net mana every time. This is he also has basalt monolith, so he has two of those Zerda um, infinites. Oh, he, okay. He actually ran the basalt. I didn't know if he was running that main deck or not. I don't know if he was main deck. Let me double. Uh, I don't have his main deck list here, Mark. Okay, but I sure. think he is. Obviously, I'm pretty sure is... he's running both. I'm pretty sure I looked at his list last night when he posted it, and he's running both. This is obviously well documented in the. In the draft article about combos in VRD, so yeah. if you if you have curiosity, go and read there. The author is very clever, and the content is great. All right, so what might come in here? We could see things like uh, yeah, you take a look at uh, Force of Vigor. Force of Vigor is obviously very strong. Um, we could see Worship come in mm -hmm. as, as a good possibility. Um, he's already got the Karn main Council's judgments in the board. I know. Also, the ley line of sanctity likely comes in because most of Eric's things are going to go to your face. That makes sense. So Eric is actually taking the bold choice of running zero basic lands, which means his sideboard is made up of exactly five cards. So he kind of has choices of whether he brings in things like Pact of Negation, right? These kind I of I think his pact might broad. be main. Deck. No, yeah, I saw it on the side of the board. Yeah, I, the I board. bet it's Pact, Equine Truth, or, and I, I don't know what the other things are. But yeah, definitely those two. Th those those are the first two that immediately come to mind as being sideboard. Tormod's Crypt, very likely the sideboard. Crypt um, doesn't seem to do too. Well, I guess with the lands, it depends if he gets the uh, Crucible out, right? The Crucible play. Yeah, none of these seem particularly uh, great against Brandon's right. list here. Well, and, and he's focused on getting the combo. You know? Yeah, So, yeah. I mean, he, he he's pretty clearly stated he's not that concerned with interaction. Exactly. Uh, 
Yeah, his his deck so is he's definitely. He's looking at the Skyclave Apparition, which is pretty good. Uh huh. Yeah, there are so many cards out of his list. I'm looking through here that I really desperately should have had in my list. Out uh, of Eric's. Yeah. 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 They're great. Um, the one that hurt the most is the Seed of the Synod for me. Even though like there are cards that would have been better, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't really anticipate getting them. But Seed of the Synod is the one like Talarian Academy I would have loved to have. But of course, fifth round, I'm not going to be taking it that early. Right. Uh, I'm happy at taking Oko over it, but you know. Still, there are cards that really miss. So the problem a lot of times with VRD sideboarding is like, what do you take out? You know, sometimes it's just totally. not clear. Uh, like Destiny Spinner doesn't have as much value against Eric, but it also is kind of an alternative win con that he can turn his lands into big creatures. Mm -hmm. um, though in this match, I think that's way too slow. So I, I, I don't think, I think Destiny Spinner probably comes out. I totally agree. Nope. It seems very bad. Yeah. Like it's obviously a good card, right? right. But what we saw there was Brandon was probably a turn or two away from killing him. Right. The answer is not that he needs a win condition. Right. Uh, he's looking he's looking at Grove there. Yeah. Whether he wants another tutor target. Right. Zurin Orb. Is that the old? He, he has the wrong art for Zurin Orb, which is disappointing. He just took out Oath of Nyssa. So he's he's kind of taking out some of the consistency, some of the cantrips. Right. I think he took out Heatly Eye. I, mean, that, I would absolutely take out Heatly Yeah, and he just did. He yeah, agrees, yeah. Is that a land tax? That is land tax. Uh, right. For solitary confinement land tax. Sure. Purposes. Sure. But he takes it out. Okay. Because he's bringing in five, six cards. Solitary confinement land tax is an interesting choice in VRD, where you don't necessarily always have the uh, like you don't have the luxury of having a hundred card deck that you can just find lands for forever. But it buys him enough time to get Hall of Healing sure. Generosity online, okay? Which can make him then go infinite, where, the, where he can always have a card to pitch. Okay. Uh, here, talk me through that. I'm, so not, I'm not familiar enough with the these cards. It's Tolarian for uh, it's Volra Stronghold. Yeah, Volra Stronghold or uh, the the artifact one that you just talked about. <laughs> uh, ruins. Oh, Academy Academy uh, Ruins. Yeah, that's Academy Ruins. Talarian Academy is the one right. I was talking so, about. Yeah, but, oh, but yeah, but yeah, it's Academy Ruins for enchantments, mm -hmm. and he can just always draw, put an enchantment back, and then pitch it to confinement. Okay, so he's showing us what he's putting in. Looks like Nissa. Oh, taking out Nissa, Heliod. He's he's putting one of these back. He's got seven coming out now. He's making a decision. Dryads there. Um, so he's making a decision of what's coming oh, back is in. Is that is that the it's what, Druid it's class? Yes, Druid class. I mean, life gain is helpful, but yeah. not necessary. So. Okay, so Katilda is ended up coming yeah. out. And then, yeah, so we've got Worship, Force of Vigor, oh, nice. ne Needle. Yeah, I, I think everything I called except for Needle. Yeah. Worship is a, is a really interesting one. Can Eric beat that guy? I don't I think Eric can well, beat a Worship. Eric can beat it with the, with the, with the Walking Blood stuff, right. right? He just kills, wipes the whole board. Right, yeah, you just gotta be faster and then wipe the board. So Ballista can actually either because can Goblin Cannon go to the creatures too? Or Goblin Cannon can go can go to any target. Okay, so he can. Let's double check that. So worship may not actually do what we. Yeah, with with infinite mana, Goblin Cannons. Because for worship, the key to worship is that you need a creature. Correct. Yep. Correct. Uh, if there's an indestructible creature, then he wins. But I don't know if there's. It does any not. Or a hexproof one. creature, maybe. Um, Argothian okay. Enchantress. Argothian Enchantress gives has shroud. I'm pretty sure Argothian has shroud. Okay, so that that would be a great. I mean, yeah, that that might actually just be a straight win cotton then. Yeah, obviously, uh, with walking ballista, you can swing and eventually just kill. Right. But yeah, it at least buys you one or two turns. Yeah. But outside of that, there's definitely not a lot here. Um, I think. Oh, his ghost is in this side. I was gonna. Oh, say. hey, Cody's here. How you doing, Jaster? This is absolutely a spur of the moment thing. As of uh, noon today, I had no idea we would be yeah. considering streaming this. So <laughs> we're just throwing cards together and going to see how it goes. All right, so Caracas in hand. Uh, does that hit anything with like super Zerda. dramatic? It's Zerda. Although he can go off on top of it. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't really do much. But I mean, there's no, it's a land. He's running. He's running it as well, a land source. I mean, you can you can go off on top of it, but you kind of need you need the extra two mana to do so. So, like, a lot of times, like, in that previous line, Eric couldn't have gone off if there had been a Caracas and Tapu Okay, 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 yeah. Uh, he would have had to wait a full turn. Uh, right, right. Or no, because like, to, when you do, to the untap, you do it the, against the untap. Correct, yeah. So, yeah. So, Zerda does stop. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, like, it basically is a, uh, a miscalculation for the Zerda yeah. combo. Well, and it's a part of his land, but he wasn't going to cut it anyway. It's, sure, not, no. it's not It's not an extra card, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, Argothian and Worship is interesting. Uh, I did. I, I did not even think about the fact that both of those are pre-modern and legal. Obviously, if you're pre-modern, you're going to run the Ur Urza Saga version. Uh, but yeah, 
Yeah, so Brandon starts off. Uh, and Brandon is, uh, we have Eric actually up one game, so let's mark him over there. All right, so we got Ruby. Yeah, and this is definitely not what Brandon wants. Is that he's, but he's got a Force of Vigor in hand. Or Spire like. of Industry, I'm sorry. I think that card on the end, the, the green card is Force of Vigor on the end. I, or it's compost. Do you no, have compost? I, I have compost. Okay. Yeah, that's Force of Vigor. Okay. So that's really good here. Nice. I mean, like right now he could just blow up those two and almost be happy. Oh, and getting an getting an Emery out with for one mana always feels like you're I mean, cheating the, problem, the system. Right, the Force of Vigor problem here is that uh, Emery yes. makes it worse, right? Correct. I mean, it's still, he's, it's he's still good. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and do it. He's pitching into the Force. He's going to he pitch his fast bond, okay. it looks like. Reasonable. Uh, so yeah, shrinking. He's got a fast bond or exploration. Yeah, I mean that's obviously Emery will get them back eventually, right. but it, sl- it slows. It's, it's Emery slows, and turns. the spire is spire cannot make. Does he need blue to activate Emery or not? Uh, you do not need blue to activate Emery. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the, there's a mana vault. Uh, there's an ancient den that he could get back. I I don't see what those first two cards. Are. Uh, one of them was a grim or a basalt. It was a, one of the oh, okay, so we got a monolith there. I can't tell what that card is. I cannot tell what that card is. It's a rare. Uh, it's pointed at Emery, and I don't know. It costs a single green. See, oh, that's Needle. Needle, okay. He yeah. just needle. It's a weird art Needle. Yeah, but Brandon's playing all real cards tonight, just okay. to flex on everybody here. He decided to bring a full deck of actual cards, so yeah. it's not a traditional uh, regular proxies. Okay, so Needle naming Emery. Yeah. That is very strong. Yeah, Obviously, this, it's not a mana ability, so Emery's can't do anything with it. Yeah, this seems strong here. We got a welder. All right. Yeah, I mean, Pithy Needle naming Emery. I bet Brandon wishes he could change that naming right now, despite it being completely fine. Right. You're still cutting the outs, you know? I mean, you, you can bring back one thing instead of two things this turn. Well, and he, he can bring something as soon as he gets right. his next artifact. Right. He doesn't have one yet. Yeah, Brandon definitely has a lot more interaction than Eric does. Right. <laughs> Eric has tried to go for the the win very quickly. I saw Soul Ring sitting there. I don't know what. I don't know if he. He's maybe him. Soul Rolling it. Uh, he I th- he tried to sh- put it in his graveyard. I'm not okay. sure what's going on there. Maybe he got milled off something. Oh no, that's a Goblin Engineer, not a Goblin Welder. So he's tutoring for the Soul right. Ring. Right, he's tutoring. Place. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was an actual Welder, but it's no, an Engineer. No, no. Yeah. He did not take Welder actually. I don't think. I think he just has uh, Engineer because. Better card raise deck. No, there's a welder as well. He got it's it early on. Well? Okay. The very top there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I say now. 14 pick. I'm a big fan of welder and engineer. They're two of my favorite EDH cards. Um, so, Jester, I, I think that oftentimes you might think bouncing Emery is good. But remilling. Yeah, remilling and specifically in a welder deck does not necessarily seem like the best call. Obviously, it's a huge tempo loss, so maybe it's still fine. All right, so, we got Sylvan for some digging now. Sylvan Library there? Yeah. Okay. And the Krakus did bounce the Emery. I think it's actually completely fine. With the needle out especially, because like he can he can continue to mill. You know. Fair. But I mean I think if right. Eric had the choice of if I could pay zero mana mill four, right. that would not that would still be good. Right now it obviously can't play Emery unless she costs three, now down to two, because he finally played a second artifact. First artifact. And we're consuming a pointer source as is usual yeah. tradition, even though there's only four of us here. There's uh, some kids, too. They, they made a work. piece of pizza each. <laughs> yeah. my, my nine-year-old went went ape over the uh, size of the pointer source. Mm-hmm. She called it the Tyrannosaurus of Pizza. So we got a Pirate Spell Bomb. This can stop something. I, you know, um, he also has um, Bomberman going. He's got Salvagers, so if he can get something going there, he can, uh, like LED, yeah, he, he can kill with the Spell Bomb. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I bet that Pirate Spell Bomb is going to the graveyard for something else after right. the Engineer. And that's exactly what's happening. Mm-hmm. I, I, he's going for the Monolith, it looks like. I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, yeah, Welder for Monolith seems like a very reasonable choice. Yeah. Uh, this turn, he could put. So it's the Basalt. He could put Zerd in his hand. hand. He would need the extra mana for the Monolith next time. Uh, so mono, Basalt Monolith only costs one to untap. Oh, that's right, right. So all he needs is a land drop next turn okay. if, if he were to make that line. And a kill. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, but right. that, that I assume is much easier. In fact, I bet. I don't know. I can't see his graveyard right now, uh, but I'm willing to bet. Krakus rebounds Emery. Yep. So he did take the he took took the gamble of I'm going to pay one blue and mill four cards. Yeah. He liked that choice. 
But he chose not to put right. Zerda into hand. I guess there's no reason to do so. Oh, but he's got Big Daddy Karn on top here. Ooh. But does he have... So does he have a land in hand, I guess, is the question. Does he have Crucible in hand? So Karn, the great creator, is the reason why I think that I'm unfavored against Brandon. I actually feel very good about the matchup other than that card. Yeah, he's got the land. Yep, so there, there's a Null Rod in play now. Yeah. And Big Daddy comes down. I would not be surprised to see Eric scoop here. Yeah. I don't know how he can beat that card. I'm Matt, hearing some Matt, very sad noises. From yeah, well, and Matt, Madeline learned the other night about things like painter grindstone combo. Oh, so God. she's like asking what's going on. She's like, what's, what's going on? Yes. They're coaching my nine-year-old to advanced uh, combo logistics. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm looking through Eric's list. Blast Zone is a way to answer Karn. Very slow. It's very, one. very, very slow answer to Karn. Uh, I don't Well, especially with the, if he lattices next turn. He's got a planes in the top. So all he has to do is get the planes and lattice next turn. Yeah. I, I, I'm not seeing a great line out of this for Eric. Right. So the needle and the forces are enough to slow it down to where... At least this match, yeah. This, Yeah, this game, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I keep hoping and I keep being like, oh, this card could answer it. And then I think about it and it's like, nope, that's an artifact too. No. Yeah, it's, I think it's just Blast Zone is his only answer to Karn once it's on the table. Uh, I hope I'm wrong because I think Eric's deck is very sweet. I, I think, is this the first companion deck we've seen in VRD? Obviously we've seen companions. Lutris. <sighs> we've seen Lutris. Have we, okay, sure, sure, yeah. sure. But yeah, I guess Lutri is a free card, right? Yeah. Like this is the first one that seems built around a commander yeah. using the restriction. Yeah. Um, I, there I think may we have had Azur, one, one. I think we had one list that might have been it could play Luris, but it could sometimes depending on its configuration. Sure, yeah. I think main deck configuration this is the first one. Yeah. Though. Back in the old companion rules, I think there was one Luris deck from an online draft. Yeah. But in St. Lotus, especially, there have been. Zero. But those were all during COVID time, so there was a lot less. Exactly. During COVID main time, still COVID time. But, yes. Uh, I cannot. I see he's responding. He's thinking about responding. Okay. Uh, he floats some mana. He floats some mana. Okay, sure. Response. Technically correct play from Eric Levine. I expect nothing less. Yeah. Oh, another artifact lands. It just cries. Yep. Passes the turn. Not, literally nothing. So yeah, now Brandon, like you said, just needs to find a land and he wins the game. Yeah, he's got two in the top. <laughs> He's still at 19. He hasn't taken the taken the iron cost for Sylvan Library yet. But yeah, th this game feels a lot over at this point. This is Sylvan Library. I don't think I've seen this art before. It's the Commander... CC1, whatever something, that Yeah, is. Commander Collection Green. Sure. I'm going to jump to the Masters. Nope, not that one. Let's jump to... This is the one I'm, I'm yeah. familiar with. But yeah, I... I I think Brandon's just being very careful, but yeah. if, if those are three lands on the left side and I'm not missing something, he should just be able to... Uh, right, he hasn't summoned up yet, so maybe he's... Wait, no, he, he only has five mana, right? Isn't it five for Lattice? No, Lattice is six. Okay. So yeah, he, he's still one turn away from the Lattice. Okay. So next turn he has it fully locked. I don't know what Eric's going to do in the meantime, but... I mean, you can actually just roll up and kill one of his lands here just, to, just because at this point, too. That's true, yeah. You can use the Liquid Metal Coating plus Karn trick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pretty strong. Or you could turn the engineer into a goblin where he, or an artifact where he can't use it this turn. Oh, how does he do that? Uh, no, never mind. Sorry, I was, never mind. Yeah, you, right. you, you, I, you said liquid metal coating, and that's right. Yes, that's yes. It's not the liquid metal coating. It is not, but yeah, it's, right. it's, it's the same effect that normally comes out of there. Right. It seems like Brandon was being nice and decided not to not yeah. to kill a land. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's amateur hour. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I think it's mostly uh, being polite after after the shellacking that Brandon gave Eric in the last uh, the last time they played. I feel like this is just uh, yeah. being polite. And we go get a lattice. This is almost surely going to cause. Yep. There's the lands pickup. And, and there's yeah. the scoop. All right, I'm gonna grab a piece of pizza. All right. You mind grabbing me a drink while you're out there? Yeah. yeah Thank yeah. you. Do you have a glass in here? Or uh, I don't have one in here now. Okay. You have one in here. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. All right. So we're going into there with. Uh, the rubber match here. So Brandon versus Eric. Uh, I think post sideboard, it's pretty clear that Brandon is favored. He just has a lot more interaction. Um, that being said, he still needs to draw those cards, and Eric is ridiculously fast with his kill. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, Eric opted to play this uh, play this loot or 
what's it called, the Zerta list, and Zerta obviously doesn't allow for him to play any cards that activated abilities. So all of his uh, all of his spells are uh, are cards that can tap for something, um, and that that is pretty difficult. I mean, obviously Eric could be playing counter spells. I don't think he's actually playing any counter spells at all. But uh, Zerda is a huge restriction for him, and yeah. he's been playing it, playing it to effect in, in game one. Eric got there. Had Echoing Truth the next card. Oh, but Echoing Croc, Truth. Then, then he could try to win with Croc for, with Zerda, but the Croc is what stopped it. So that is fair. Oh, this is a new. This is a very sweet. This guy's got, got almost a little cinnamon in it. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like a little cinnamon spice in that one or something. Pretty exciting. In addition to playing six matches of uh, VRD tonight and starting at seven thirty p.m. here. Uh, we are deciding to also do a whiskey tasting. So yeah. the match's quality is going to increase over the night is the hope. I got to show that. I got to kids home at some point. I can't drink too many. T- taste too many. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's real close for you. Yeah. Yeah, we might want to get your matches up done a little earlier. <laughs> we'll do what we do. It's fine. I know Eric originally said he had some place to be at 8, so I don't know if that's still the truth or not. 8 tonight? <laughs> yeah. He said he had to be home by 8. <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe that's true. I, I think he was planning on playing in one of the online tournaments or something mm-hmm. and then decided to to uh, join us instead. So, Yeah, there's obviously this weekend is supporting your local game store by going to play a store championship or whatever they're calling it right now. Um, so that's great. Everyone here is planning on doing that until we realize there's Vintage Earth History to be able to yeah. play instead, which for me at least is a pretty easy decision. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, this is this is gonna be weird. I uh, I've played two VRDs in the past month after not playing for three years, <laughs> so it's been a pretty exciting time. Looking at the next St. Lotus, is it stacked? I don't it know if it feels it does. It feels pretty pretty stacked. Yeah, I'm it's very interested. Interesting one. Uh, but yeah, so people both Eric and Brandon are playing, right. obviously from being finalists in the last one. I think Thirsty's the real odd card. I yeah. mean, Thirsty's an old school player, but he doesn't play a lot of Magic anymore. He really and doesn't. He thinks a lot about VRD, but yeah. I don't know. I'm worried about how well, if he doesn't practice in the meantime, right. I'm worried about his actual matches. Yeah. Okay, there's Solitary Confinement in hand. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sithis. Sithis? So it's, a, it's a card draw and life gain. Uh, SY. It's another Enchantress. Okay. All right. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. What's that on the far right? It looks like a snow covered forest, but that can't be right. Um, her, her Horizon, can it be maybe? Okay. Yeah, there's just so many different uh, versions of right, cards. Right, right, right. And him card. playing real cards like, oh, look at me, I own real cards. <laughs> yeah, I don't own any cards. I own cards I didn't have to break my EDH deck apart for. <laughs> uh, is, is Eric is Sterling Grove, from him? That is a mulligan for him. Okay. Which is the first one he molded in, too, and still got there. Sure, yeah. Uh, we see a Sterling Grove there. Okay, that's on the far right. Uh, Yeah, it was on the far right. Nice. So yeah, Sterling Grove is, is an interesting one. It provides a shroud, mm-hmm. um, which against things like that Echoing Truth yeah. is pretty good. And then also tutors. Yes, which I think is the primary reason that's right. there. Obviously. Yeah, I mean it, the power of Grove is it's you know protection into the tutor when you need it. You right. know when you get all your other pieces. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with solitary confinement in hand, Brandon probably won't need to do that very often. Right. Now, we haven't seen one of the explosive, like, fast bond hands that I've seen him have last night, where he's got dumping, like, nine lands on turn three. And... Yeah. No, I mean, he, he, he did have a fast bond, but he didn't have the lands to pull it off last time, so exploration was just as good. Oh, we got a workshop hand. Work into Metal Worker. Oh, my God. Okay. This is why I'm most excited for this one, actually. Uh, metal Worker is choice. Yeah. I, I love this card, and it's so hard to pull off, but Eric is running the artifact density to actually make it happen. Yeah. So workshop's a card that we often discuss and it's also like I think people draft it a lot of times and don't have the art like enough artifacts to make it work. I agree. Eric's deck is again, like Yes. Academy Metal Worker and Workshop are all perfectly made for this deck. Yeah. If this metal worker taps for twelve mana, it would not shock me. Uh oh, only four. Four. There's Mox Opal and a Mox Ruby. Yeah. So two Mox in. Must be really sad that that's all he gets. Yeah. So he has six mana sitting in play right and now. And a storm count. <laughs> His storm count is two, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so six mana. Is he going to slam a work? Nine mana, because he has workshop. Oh, God, yeah. Nine mana for an artifact. Right. But six mana is enough for Zerda and play Zerda right now. He can do that this turn. So if he had if he had a monolith, right. he would win the game. Inventor's Fair, which is alive. Yep. So he could tutor with the Inventor's Fair for three mana, I think. Uh, Inventor's Fair needs three artifacts in play, which He's he does have. Uh, and then, yes, three mana tap sack, I believe. 
I just played this card. Four mana tap sack. Okay. Anyway, he's got four floating right now from Metal Worker. Yep. <laughs> I just played this in. Uh, I just played this in the other in, in my last. How many uh, how many of life triggers did you miss off of the Witcher's Fair? Zero. I was really? very careful with it. <laughs> and he pops it. He takes the four, uses the four. Okay. So he's got five artifact mana floating essentially right now. So he cannot do Zerda. So he finds the monolith. Right, uh, he can play the monolith. He cannot play. He can't do anything right, right. now. So he, he can play the monolith, but he can't actually activate and win the game. Right. Uh, next turn, if he presumably. If he had more artifacts in hand, he would have shown them. Yeah. Well, oh, see, I guess that is still positive. If he, no, I I, I think if I were Eric, I would hold on to this next turn so I could reveal it to Metal Worker. Mm, uh, because the yeah. three mana off of the workshop is only usable for artifacts. Oh, we got an Emery. Okay. So Emery make, probably changes his calculation because you can then recast it from the graveyard. And we got a Grim. I don't, the neck, the. What is that? Is that a one black card? No, it's an artifact. I can't tell the one above the, the one? Grim. I also cannot spot what it is. Uh, does he have a key? Is it a chromatic sphere, maybe? Uh, he does run chromatic sphere. That might be sphere. Let's, let's look at the top of the chromatic sphere art. Not that one. No, we we run a, OG card that is, here. That is chromatic sphere. Okay. Are you sure? There, it looks like there's some white right here, and I don't see that in this other card. Uh, this oh, white. Oh, yeah, right, right. It's a throne ball. Yep, the, the ball. It's the, it's the ball there. Okay. Yeah, so there's a chromatic sphere. That one probably won't be relevant in this match. Right. But, yeah. Emery, I think, makes the Basalt Monolith play a lot safer. Yeah. So what comes down here? So yeah, next turn, there Sith, should be a Zerda. Sithis, Trigate is engine running. I mean, Eric, Eric's Argothian. Still... We have Argothian. Eric is still one mana away from actually going off next turn. Which, I mean, if he draws an artifact, he has it, but... Right. Argothian, okay, so that's fine. There's no worship in play, so we don't have to worry right. about that combo. So it's really just whether Eric has or draws an artifact next turn. If he does, he wins the game. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is, you know, I know Brandon and I have talked a lot about his deck and the explosive and that, but those type of explosive decks. The thing about his deck is it requires a lot of parts to be explosive. Correct. Right, yep. and... I think we're seeing that that is what those when you require a lot of parts like oh my god is it beautiful when they come and he's got a lot of redundancy I'd say he's going to be at explosive 65% of the time sure. you know but in that 35 30% whatever where you don't have the parts and you, this is what you're doing Brandon does seem like the kind of champion of oh he's activating there's there it is there's the two mana that's all he needed the mystic forge so two mana uh, plus the two or one mana plus the two red mana off the moxen and then he uses one plus the three off Basalt to grab Zerda. Uh, so he plays Forge. Sure. That's interesting, actually. He didn't need to Does do Forge that. Forge costs what? Four? Forge costs four. So he's got one floating right now. Correct. Uh, with just one, he's still actually fine. It's a free cast because he could. He already had the four mana off the Basalt in order to grab and untap. Basalt only costs one to untap, you'll remember. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he still, he still has the infinite mana. And Mystic Forge does allow for him to get to it. Um, he's, not, really he's, not going to, he's not going for it this turn. Uh, pr Prism, that's a net. So Why? I don't know. Prism's a net there, though. I don't think he's going for it this turn. Well, Prism's free, you're right. Right. He could just be casting it to dig to see if he can find the actual win con. Right. Soul Ring. Also net positive. I didn't see that card. I did not see what that one was. But yeah, he probably just doesn't have the outlet for it and doesn't want to expose everything, maybe. Right. He doesn't want to expose Zerda to a kill spell. Right. I don't know what Brandon has that could kill a Zerda, but... Zerda is the one piece that's not replaceable in this combo because Emery can fetch back everything else. So right. he wants to be absolutely sure that he has Zerda protected or Zer Zerda only out for the one turn he's going to win. So yeah, let's see. He hasn't tapped the Mystic Forge yet. Right. Uh, so Mystic Forge can obviously tap to get rid of the top Get Zerda to his hand. So maybe he is, uh, maybe there's actually something that he needs to, uh, that he's going to cast off the top. Oh, cannot cast that. So you tap the soul ring, but it may not do anything. But it's going to use Emery. I'm going to One second. No, he's using it for the monolith. Okay. okay so he's, he's paying the two men off the soul ring to get the grim monolith, uh, which nets him one mana. Yeah, he uh, cannot cast Azura. Why not? Because you need two red or white, and he doesn't have it. 
There's one, he used one off the prism earlier. Oh, he did? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So he, he's basically doing a turn, but I don't think it matters. I think he was just assuring himself. I think there's a line there where you get Chromatic Sphere back and can dig one card deeper for the outlet. Okay. Uh, but again, I, there, there's very likely something I'm missing about this, but if, if I'm in Eric's spot, I think I dig one mana deeper with the Chromatic Sphere and then still go off this turn if I find the outlet on top, like Walking Ballista, for instance. Right. Didn't see what that looked. It looked like, it looked a, city like a land, looked like a city of brass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now he's actually casting Zerda. Right. So all right. Uh, there's infinite. He can, get rid of, he can get rid of the city of brass if he wants. With the, oh no, that was an echoing truth. Zerda has some stupid ability that nobody ever uses. It makes something unblockable or something. Yeah. I just want to double check that. Yeah, it makes a creature not be able to block. All right. That was a game. Well, what's the win con? Uh. I don't think it mattered. I, I think he didn't show it. I mean, so he's got the... Oh, oh there's a Goblin Cannon on oh, top. Oh, it's Cannon on top. Okay. Goblin Cannon. So this is the card that, although we all recognize that he should have been running uh, Rocket Launcher... No, this is better. Uh, this is Rocket a better Launcher is much Rocket. more awkward. I mean, Rocket Launcher is strictly worse, but it has much better art. So, but yeah, yeah, he is running Goblin Cannon, and obviously Goblin Cannon, uh, with infinite damage, you activate right. its ability in response to itself over and, and over over destroy their life total. And Brandon... Uh, it was sad and revealed his his uh, solitary confinement that he didn't have mana to cast, right. which would have uh, saved him from this this fate. All right, so Eric takes down Brandon. All right, do you want to run out? You should run out there next. Yeah, I'll run you're, out there. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, actually going to need to yeah, be able to get out of here if you need to. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to have uh, Steven stepping in to actually play a match. Uh, Eric now is stepping up to one and zero. Uh, with Brandon has played one match previously off the Discord against someone. I'm not sure exactly who it was. Uh, maybe tuna, uh, but it, it's been a very wild, wild time. Here's the uh, the draft list in case anyone hasn't seen it yet. Um, this draft was basically for for me where I was sitting in, in uh, eighth seat. It was Eric and me fighting repeatedly over artifacts, and uh, then I was fighting with somebody. Uh, I think it was I was fighting with tuna a little bit over just random uh, blue, blue and uh, I was random blue and green cards. So, um, there have been this. This is one of the drafts where I first feel like we actually figured out how sideboard cards work. It was really fun to see uh, and see that like every deck I think actually picked cards that are not meant to be running the main deck. And I know that like sounds silly, but it was one of the first times where we actually saw that happen. So I think everybody played really well, and it was a really fun, uh, really fun time to see. Kind of a bunch of people that have thought a lot about the format really be able to dive deep into it, but. Uh, yeah, so we're getting the next match on here. I'm not sure who's going to hang out and play the next match over there. Uh, whether Eric's going to defend his title on stream or whether we're going to have somebody else there. Uh, but somebody's going to be uh, somebody's gonna be changing out and joining me over here in the booth. We're just going to do a little round-robin tournament here with four people tonight and basically go until we either get too tired or back out. Okay, so yeah, we, it does look like uh, I think that is Stephen Hagen's hand, so we'll drop him over there. And Steven is also up 1-0 from an earlier match today. All right, Brand, Brandon's here. I'm excited to hear Brandon's take on that match before they uh, before they call it. Um, but yeah, so Steven versus Eric. Uh, Steven's deck is, is a definitely... Uh, I think it's very strong. It's, it's definitely a little more fair, I would say, uh, than if we look at either Brandon or Eric's deck. Steven's running, I mean, running Painter Grindstone obviously is the one condition, but it's also running cards like Moat and Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Uh, late in the draft, he opted to go for a Knowledge Pool, which is going to be pretty exciting uh, if he actually does pull off the Knowledge Pool combo of locking out his opponents from being able to cast any spells for the rest of the game. He's Holy boy! Can you close the door, actually? Absolutely. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it's Steven, like, Leaned hard into the walkers are the best thing. Obviously, he wrote an article explaining why he thinks walkers are the biggest thing for the format. <laughs> That's old hat. Brandon, let's hear about that match. Uh, I mean, it played out pretty much like I thought it would, which yep. is uh, whoever shuffles their deck better was going to win. <laughs> and that is exactly what happened. Uh, because if I get solitary confinement out, I win. And you were, you were one man away from it, right? Or one card away from it? I saw you yeah. reveal out of the end of the match. Yeah, I would. I uh, uh, turn two. I played an Argothian Enchantress mm -hmm. and 
cool. Maybe I could have played a Sterling Grove. Didn't really matter. No. Wait a minute. Could I so search no. for a Mox? That wouldn't help. Uh, it wouldn't help. Does Sterling Grove find artifacts too? No. Okay. Which is why it wouldn't help. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I play that out. It's just basically like I see a Solitary Confinement in hand. I have two lands. I have an Argothian Enchantress. I have a Sithis. So even if he doesn't have his combo, I'm right. I'm going to win. Or if he doesn't have this combo, I'm going to win the game. But if I get to three lands and play Solitary Confinement... Then you're locked. Then, right. I, then I win. Like, he, there's not a single card in his deck oh. that can beat Solitary Confinement. I don't think he has any enchantment hate. Uh, he, he has a one Echoing Truth. I believe that's it. Yeah, to be able to return it to my hand. Yeah, his Echoing Truth and Blast Zone, I think, are the two answers. Okay, but yeah. both of them are incredibly slow and unlikely. So I agree totally. Yeah. So uh, all I saw in Steven's hand here was Teferi here of Dominaria for what it's worth. Okay. But uh, not the walker that he wants in his hand. <laughs> no, the, not on turn the, one. The, 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 yeah, that, that's a walker that he wants to draw, mm-hmm. but uh, not, not a bad card overall. Eric is off to a blazing start. <sighs> yeah, I mean, um, he tends to do that. This is yeah. this is what artifact decks do. Um, we have not seen, I don't think, an artifact deck drafted as well as this one, or is like as scary and potent as as this one. I think the Zerda tech is something that's been missing for a really long time uh, from these kind of artifact decks that have Basalt Monolith, that have Grim Monolith. And it's like, oh, like these are a bunch of really good cards. Yep. Uh, the companion mechanic allows you to very reliably get this happening. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, like, not only the good cards, but with Zerta, that's an infinite right. mana loop. All right. Sweet. Like, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, let's do this thing. And then, you know, Eric was able to get the, uh, the Mox, the Mana Vault, um, just a load of other stuff that's really, really scary, accelerates very fast. So, yeah, I mean, his deck's very strong. I'm still yeah. skeptical on it. Um, but I, I think that it's it, when it goes off, it's very hard to interact with. It's just mm-hmm. very fast. Uh, Dovin Hand of Control is a card that, if Steven had landed on turn one on the play, would have been a very different game than it is this game. With yeah. The on the play. That's, uh, that's a bummer. Can you, you know? imagine that? Really? He, he would have had nothing. Yeah, no, he, he that's, that's fucking wrecked. Right. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Well, actually, no, because Ancient Tomb... You can play Mox, Mox for one, yep. and then Mox tap one the extra the from the Ancient Tomb to get the Mana Vault. Yeah. But yeah, he wouldn't have had the top, and he wouldn't have had the Monolith. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Eric has three cards there. I see a Goblin Cannon. I didn't make out the other two were off of the Sensitive any top at the end of Steven's turn. Uh, I did not pay attention. Uh, to you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but it's really interesting because I think we've all... Holy cow, I just realized... Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, he's he's one mana away from going infinite with Zerda. Yeah. Right? Like, because he pays three off the monolith, and then he just needs a red mana or white mana to put it into his hand to, to cast the Zerda, and he wins. Yeah, it's super scary. So, yeah, he, di- he didn't get it this time because he didn't have a second land. But, sorry, you were saying, carry on. No, I, like, uh, it's just, it's interesting that the four of us, I think Steven is the outlier mm-hmm. in this group in terms of what, uh, in terms of his deck composition. But the three of us, we've kind of been rallying against this uh, this combo deck uh, mentality. Mm-hmm. It's like you, know, you have to have good cards that like that do this, or whatever. And yet we all kind of ended up uh, doing these synergistic card decks yes. that just have a very very potent uh, like combo piece to them. Well, and I think that's kind of the argument that we've we've all made, right? Is that yeah. combo is absolutely important. You need to have them in your deck. But as I posted an article that had something like 70 different combos in it, there's so many in this format that you can take that it's not like it needs to be drafted quickly. I think yeah. you, you've gone out on a limb and said no combo piece should be drafted before round four. And mm-hmm. I think you're wrong. But like I, I understand your point, and I agree with the direction that you're going, is that you should draft a good deck and then stick a combo into it as opposed to drafting a combo deck. Yeah. Um, I think... So he, he expedition maps for Talarian Academy. Uh, Talarian Academy currently so, taps for three. It's a good card. I don't know necessarily that that is something that he needs, given that he can just get infinite mana. 
Uh, I mean, I think it's very good at getting him to infinite mana. <laughs> uh, how 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 does he not have it already? Oh, because he needs a second red. Yeah, he doesn't have the red. Well, then why doesn't? I don't understand why he doesn't just get like a great furnace. Uh, because Dovin, no, Dovin doesn't stop that. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have the actual payoff. Maybe he maybe he uh, topped into the the retro fitter. Maybe his loss in VRD seven has just set him back <laughs> mentally to such a degree that he couldn't see that possibility. I, I'm I don't know. Listen, I'm not. I'm not confident in my my math either. Because yeah. last match, I think he could have gone off a turn earlier against you and chose not to. Maybe because he was scared of exposing the Zerda, or maybe because he miscounted. Um, but it, it's very possible. Like Zerda is a really is an irreplaceable piece, and as soon as he plays her, oh, he you can't he, get he got back. he got goblin or cannon what, goblin cannon yeah off the top with Mystic Forge. Exactly. So he couldn't have gone off. Well, he could have tapped Mystic Forge to get rid of the top card to check, uh, or he used the Chromatic Sphere to dig one card deeper. And both of those, he still had enough mana to go off through. But again, it, yeah, it, water under the bridge. He still like was ninety something percent to win regardless. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ashiok exiles Welder, uh, Pirate Spell Bomb, and I think it was a it was some kind of mana rock. Okay, this maybe? this is actually way bigger than it seems at uh, at first glance. So Ashiok is a card I think out of everybody that kind of drafts within our group that I rate the highest. I think I that I think that Ashiok. I think I'm second, but yeah, I agree with you. Is incredible. Um, oh wow! I that, that was almost playing a uh, another Soul Land, which is City of Traders. But carry okay. on. Okay, yeah. Uh, when it exiles, you're getting rid of seven point five percent of that person's deck. Yes. What he just got rid of was Goblin Welder, yep. which it, it's a one drop <gasps> from. He got the second red. Okay, but it is a one so, drop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Is he saying that he wins? Because I think that he should win. I, I don't know if he's saying it. Or yet. well, he paradoxical outcome, which is essentially. But continue a your win point about Ashiok. Okay, so uh, being able to play that Goblin Welder uh, for that next turn, in response to Eric doing whatever, he can use the Goblin Welder to switch it out with some you know useless rock in his graveyard. Correct. Um, and that just like disrupts the entire clock uh, for one of those key pieces, uh, which in this case, you know, is going to be either a Grim Monolith or the Basalt Monolith. Yes. But it's... Uh, yeah, he's two turns away from doing that, but that would be insane, right? Like as soon as he gets that Welder resolved right. and untapped without Mana Sickness, yeah, he... It, Eric is very hard to win the game. It, uh, it is now an out that is not reliant on being drawn. Yes, yes, true. Yeah. So, uh, Goblin Welder obviously being able to target your opponent's graveyard as well as your own. That's yeah. obviously what they're talking about there. So, oh, yeah. So, Eric didn't go for it. He, yeah, he had he had the ability to make infinite mana. Perhaps he didn't. I mean, he had the retrofitter. Um, well, he still doesn't have the second red. Well, he did, though, because he had he could tap the Mox Ruby for red and then Paradoxical to return it and then tap it again for uh, red. In order to play Paradoxical, he had to tap the Ruby to have... He had the he had the Seed of the Sin out there. No, that just came out. Oh, he, he played it a second time? Yeah. Okay, I mean, he must have missed the line drop then. Interesting. So, uh, it, it looks like he was just one short. And I don't know if that's a, if that's a play mistake or just like an unfortunate uh, byproduct of sequencing here. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, this game is still going, and yeah. I think that Eric's got to have a lot of cards in his hand at this point. Well, and er the Dovin at this point is really hurting Eric. The The workshop unlocks a lot, though, because the workshop can pay for yeah. Dovin Cax. Yeah. And there's a uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Okay, so we have a Metal Worker. Metal Worker's going to tap for approximately 1,000. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a... That's no fool pooper. But, like, so this is why, this is in part why uh, Ashiok is such an underrated VRD card. Yes. Is because, especially in conjunction with something like Dovin, that says, like, hey, I'm just going to gum up the works for a little bit. Uh -huh. It may seem like a little piddly card, which is like, oh, hey, let me just pause the VRD for between two and five turns. Right, right. Okay. Uh, if you have Ashiok on board while that is taking place, mm -hmm. by the time that's over, you have gotten them between eight and 
uh, eight and twenty cards deeper into their library with Ashiok and taken threats that for yourself yeah. and remove them. Assuming for that yeah. you haven't drawn anything of your own volition too, right. uh, and like that's a it's a very real clock. And so if you survive that period of time, it it is it's just one or two turns. Oh no! So one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so eight mana is getting activated off the metal worker. Okay, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, you know, uh, metal worker, good card. Some <laughs> say busted. Uh, if you cannot deal with that card on turn one, the classic play yeah. workshop into metal worker. Oofa doofa, my friend. Yeah. Oofa doofington. Uh, metal worker is not a good card. Mishra's workshop is an incredibly good card, and metal worker plays very well with it. Turns out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we, we have the Basalt coming down first for four mana, of course, with Dovin. So then there's still four mana floating. Down to three, casting the uh, Ruby in order to get the red. He played a, uh, a Glimmer Void, so now there is second red source. So we should have Zerda coming out next. There we go. Who doesn't have to go through the tax. I mean, when you get eight off of Metal Worker, if you can get the two red, <laughs> we don't even really need to count at this point. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. It's infinite amount. Now, the question is... What is the outcome here? Is right. there the retrograde? Is there okay? So yeah, there it is. Yeah, uh, and this is infinite one ones. I assume so. In infinite one ones, infinite four fours. So yeah, he's, he has infinite flyers and infinite ground creatures. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And infinite flyers will take care of all of it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. He, he should basically as long as uh, there's a moat in play from Steven, so the flyers are going to be what's necessary. Oh, okay. So he's just, he's just he's just playing everything off the top of his library at this point. Sure. Yeah. Uben the Ineffable clears another space down from the... Uh, oh, there's the cannon for the wind this turn. Okay. Perfect. There you go. And St Stephen was reminding him that it costs one more. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, Eric made infinite again, just to show him. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, interesting. All right. So Eric Eric takes the first game. That was a no. long game. Yeah. Uh, you know, this disruption, I think... The fact that Eric got to go first uh, was really big. Yes, absolutely. Like, especially with how the hands turned out. Is like, Dude, that, that was a that, turn one doping. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was also why I was like, you know, I, uh, I'm i not a huge fan of drafting Mana Crypt into a Walker's deck because there are so few Walkers that you can play on turn one sure. uh, with just a land and a Mana Crypt. One of maybe three playable walkers uh, in the format is Dovin. Yes, uh, yeah, that that you're that you're allowed to do that with. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm like, I was just thinking through, and like basically all the walkers that I always uh, simp over, like Liliana, are just like, yeah, you can. They're all double cost. Liliana, yeah. Narset, uh, the other Ashiok, this Ashiok. Like, yeah, there are very few. I mean, it's um, like I I did draft Mana Crypt and a bunch of other Mana Rocks in the last like the St. Louis Presents draft, and obviously yeah. that was a different field. Um, but I played turn one Karn in multiple drafts, and that was very strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, accurate. So right. Eric's reviewing deck lists. So let's let's pull up the deck list actually. If you want to take a look over there, sure. Uh, see what uh, see what you might well see Eric has board. five sideboard cards. <laughs> Correct, uh, and they're all pretty broad too, right? Things like. Tormod's Crypt, uh, uh, Yawgmoth's Will. Oh, Yawgmoth's Will on the board. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, it's... I assume the Pact uh, of and, Negation. And, yeah, yeah, it's the Pact of Negation and the uh, the Lodestone Golem. Oh, Lodestone's not main deck. That's shocking, actually. I, I mean, like, if you... I don't know. It's, it seems kind of weird I would to run be my card main deck. deck. Oh, I, I love it. I think it's. I mean, it slows down other decks. Uh, okay, it looks like Steven's putting into various puzzle box, taking out to various puzzle box, moat, uh, and then two blue cards. I'm not sure. Pack negation and echoing truth. Uh, I saw a Hercules recall and an engineered explosives, and he's coming out with the Duretti and something else. Uh, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a close call. Yeah. Uh, personally, Hercules is, is bonkers in this matchup. No, it's absolutely insane. Um, because the moment he tries to uh, activate the untap ability for the first time, correct? You just 
just just reckon. And and it is it is not as good as it initially seems when you think about it, right? Because it, you can always activate in response to that Hercules and then go off over top of it. But it does basically miscalculation the activation, right? It costs two additional mana yeah. uh, in order to go off. If you don't have like that two extra mana available, right. which is like if you're trying to go off as early as you can, you're you're basically like sequencing it out so that you have either the exact amount of mana or like one additional one. The other benefit of this one is that in response to Zerda, like if if Eric does it the other way around, where uh, he's casting the Basalt in response to Zerda. Uh, after Zerda is already in play, then you can do it in response to that. Right. So. Uh, you know, if you can obviously play it by ear, but or the reason that Hercules Recall is so good is because like you get to make that choice based on the context of, of the battlefield. Uh, if they do have that extra mana, oh, okay, like I'll bring it to my hand and I'll cast it, and you're like, oh, Moonfredo, uh, Arriba <laughs> Derchi. So uh, it's it sets them back at least. Two turns? Yeah, one, one to two. Yeah, somewhere in there. One, well, yeah, one turn, I guess. Because uh, we're talking about the context of it. Those are being played already. Null Rod is obviously insane. Uh, Opposition Agent is one that I think is good against Eric that Steven could be bringing in here. Oh, hi, Hyphen. How you doing? Welcome. What up? We are, uh, we're decided to play some of the Discord matches live. Hyphen obviously running the Discord and doesn't do a lot of great work and kicking off all these things and allowing us to play some uh, VRTs here. Um, the uh, the other you know the one the two of the one to two turns. Mm-hmm. He's got the great furnace to see the cyanide. He's like, that's, you know, that's where that's where my old noggin was going Oof. with that. Yeah, no, that's when you get to bounce your opponent's lands. Uh, it's pretty freaking good. Yeet! Yep, it's just good. like that too. Okay, so we have ponder into a mana crypt. Playing the Mana Crypt on turn one and not using it. Uh, is there something that Steven has, that like a cycler or something, that I'm not thinking of? Maybe he just likes to live dangerously. Who knows? There's lots of choices here. I also don't think that life total matters. That's true. Yeah. Eric's not exactly doing the beatdown plan in this matchup. What? Uh, so I he mean, took three off the Crypt. Weird. Yeah. Uh, if Steven loses by three or less, we can make fun of him. That's that's what I'm taking away from 100%. Us. Prismatic Vista is very strong, obviously, here. Why is this happening? <laughs> Eric doesn't... Okay, four have... mana. I don't know what that card is. It's some blue card. Oh, is that Tasha's? Oh, Tasha's. Ah, uh, you know this card well. I friggin' love it. Yeah, no, I mean, so Steven just won. I don't know if you realize that. He won. He just won. Uh, probably. Okay, there's a power artifact. There's a welder. A couple lands. There's a, okay, yeah. got the metal worker. Uh, I wish Eric would splay that out so I could see all of it, but I think there's still win cons for him. I don't think he hit both of the monoliths. It is... It is grossly unlikely at this point that he has the pieces to make this happen. I don't know. The, okay, so... Den, and I'm not sure what the other... Well, the, Wait, why the did, top why one did, looks like a land. Why did, He's topping. Ancient Den, that's Basalt Monolith. That's the old border. Oh, it is, okay. So Basalt Monolith, so I, he, think it's a, I think it's a Pirate Spellbound, maybe, is the third one. Nope, that's in play. Uh, I'm not sure what the third card is. So yeah, if there's a Monolith on top... I thought that that was part of the cards I got exiled. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't Wait, see... Wait, why was... Oh, he's that's Divining Top. Correct, yeah, he used the top to check the top okay. three. Okay. I've not seen... Uh, I, th- I don't think both monoliths got exiled. I, I don't know if even one did. Sorry. That is a metal worker. Correct. Not, okay, so Grim Monolith is in play. All right. Yeah, metal worker is the last one. I'm sorry. All right, so still needs another red source. Still, Yeah, Clearly. the story of Eric's life is trying to find the second red source. Man, can we... Can we here, we'll, just, we'll shut down the stream. Yep. We'll run it back. And have and play see a what And see what happened, because if I did... I know for a fact the volcanic island got removed. Correct. But the Great Furnace also got removed. Excellent. Right? So you're thinking that there's only. I three. don't know if he has another red source. I mean, he has Glimmer Void, he has Chromatic Sphere, he has uh, Paradoxical that can bounce his own Mox. Uh, that's true. Th- th- there's a few, but yeah, retro- that's a retrofitter and a Seed of the Sin not on top. I didn't see the third card again. Okay, so I think we're about to see it though. Oh, 
Oh, he, oh, he activated top in response. Okay. So Ashiak gets nothing, and Eric gets the one card he wanted off of his top three. Two for two for my friend. This wow. is this is like, I still think that Stephen firmly have has this in the bag, mm-hmm. but like, as Eric tends to do, yep. he's going to be like, I don't know if my deck's gonna do well, and, and then, then just one. you know just goes friggin' nuts at Mc, McBago, and uh, like, yeah, it's an incredibly potent uh, combination of artifacts here. And as as we've seen, his lack of access <laughs> to being able to play Zerda has been like the most Correct. glaring weakness of this deck. And that's and that's, that okay. happens. So I'm gonna be playing against Eric very soon. Yeah. Uh, my entire feeling it's about this. Seeds. No, I, I wish. No, uh, no. So so my entire feeling about this is like Zerda is the weak point. It's the only card that's non recursible as well. So he can't get her back if he does cast her and she dies or gets exiled. I just need to counter Zerda, right? And like that that's not to say that there's it's that simple, but I think if I have a counter spell when Zerda gets cast, the game extends for at least three to four more turns. Yeah. I'm and, and I'm running like six counter spells or something. That's my entire game plan against Eric. It's just like yeah. make sure I counter Zerda. Oh, you know, is that a prismatic ending on the is. monolith? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. You just get, get, get freaking Rexoni, dude. Is that the second monolith? Yeah. The the base hole. Well, no, see, now I don't know because I thought the, the metal worker was, yeah. I, I don't I, I didn't I, see one. I believe that it is gone. We really but, need that whole NFL like replay yeah. feature. It doesn't exactly exist in this kind of booth. Uh, <laughs> listen, I I make content for a living, no, but I do make content, mm-hmm. and this is still well beyond my technological means to figure that out. Just get a dial. That'd be sweet. So yeah, we, the, we got three more cards exiled, none of which matter. They're sitting in the graveyard, but we all obviously know where those are sitting. They're sitting under Ashiok. Yep. Ashiok's minus 10 just doesn't matter, right? Like, that's just exiling graveyards and hands? Uh, Exile hands and graveyards. Yeah, so not particularly relevant in this matchup. But Ashiok's probably close, if not there. Well, now that now that Emery is in exile, that's doubly true. True. Okay, so LED means that casting Zerga won't be a problem. It's just a matter of whether you can find a Basalt if it still exists. So minus 10 is... Is it? I don't oh, know. It still is. Because he can use the... He, he just needs to get the Basalt in play. If Basalt still exists, if he can cast Basalt, from there he can activate LED, yep. put Zerda into hand, then use Mana from LED to cast her. Yep. Okay, so tapping the Academy for four. Untapping the Academy. Good. For negative four. Yes. <laughs> the commonly... It's, you know, it's really meta right now. It's a really hot strat. I mean, if, if let's assume that Basalt is hidden somewhere in that XL zone. Does Eric have a way to win? Is it just like, I'm going to make some creatures off Retrofitter and try to get there? Which is also uh, XL? No, I mean, like, like, he can, if, realistically, no. Okay. Uh, but practically, if Walking Ballista isn't exiled, it's then yep. then just put it, put a Walking Ballista down for, what, as a 4-4 four, four for 8, if he mm-hmm. can, if that's what he can manage? Uh, and then just like swing and keep ticking it up, but like you're not gonna get through the Ashiok at right. that point. Uh, yeah. And also, like that's why that Ashiok activation is so huge when you hit the Goblin Welder. It's because just okay, uh, yeah, I'll tick down one, get the Goblin Welder, and then like send your Ballista into yeah. No Man's Land, like Jeez. or your Lodestone Golem, right? Like, yeah, hey, whatever your actual alternative win con is. Wow, yeah, Ugin, Ugin is also another win con. What does I don't. Ugin, like, all I know is that it reduces the cost of your stuff by two. It does do that, but it also uh, pluses to exile the top card of your library as a two-two, and then when it dies, oh, you get it back. Well, and then you know, just getting rid of the Ashiok to give you some breathing because it looks like Eric has about five or five to seven cards left yeah. in his library. Yeah, he probably has two turns, and so getting rid of that Ashiok oh, right now, and that's yeah. a Teferi's tutelage that Stephen brought in. Yeah, so t- tutelage is obviously going to accelerate that clock quite dramatically. So Stephen did what I was kind of sort of trying to do in my very, very ill-fated VRD6, which um, was honestly... Was the mill deck? We don't talk about it. That was, that was a rough one. Uh, that is the reason that I won VRD7, is because I was so grossly embarrassed by what <laughs> happened. 
uh, during that draft that I uh, I said I am going to be serious. I'm going to be a very serious boy, and I'm going to use all my brain cells to do good at this format instead of being bad at it. And we'll we'll link that for in chat so everyone can no. check out the the beauty that was your VRD six draft. Oh, that is violence that you just committed <laughs> against me. I'm going to get some more pizza right now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, if you want to grab a drink while you're up, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe with the ice this time, that could be nice. How many cubes? Uh, three. Three would be great. Yeah. Thank you. I, I've been taught right, so recently. You can, you, know, you can talk about that all you want. <laughs> yes. So Brandon drafted a really interesting strategy that I think is actually a good strategy, but because it didn't go particularly well, it hasn't been as deeply explored, which is the strategy of mill. Uh, the downside of mill, obviously, is that four of the players at the table are going to have things like uh, Gaia's Blessing and Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, that completely invalidate the strategy. Not a great look if you're drafting mill. Uh, on the plus side, however, you can draft things like Surgical Extraction and Rest in Peace and other things that can answer it. Uh, so I think there are ways to make that deck work, and it's incredibly powerful that it does, but we haven't seen it happen yet in any kind of reasonable way. We've seen mill decks do okay, but none actually take a tournament yet. Steven is choosing to mulligan. Uh, down to six. Eric seems happy with his hand. Eric is also going to be on the play this game, which Eric on the play with a hand of seven that he's keeping is a little dangerous. We've seen him win two games off of a mull to six. Uh, and, okay, hyphen. I, I, know, I know that mill is like, has some real issues, right? For instance, the I'm going to side in my entire sideboard problem. Um, but I think that it does have, it does have some real good lines to it, right? Like it, it, it has random upside, like we were just talking about Ashiok, where you randomly exile other combo decks from the format and you just win games on turn one where you exile two of their cards that happen to be the cards they needed. Right against Eric, if you happen to hit both of his monoliths, he can't win the game anymore. And that doesn't mean that you have to mill him 40 cards, it means you have to mill him two cards and just has to be the right two. And these are all random upsides to the deck. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm obviously not drafting Mill today. I'm not probably not drafting Mill next time, but I think that it is an underexplored deck. So, uh, oh, I, I'd be excited to see Eric win a game without a monolith. I think that it's possible. I don't think it's very likely. So we have a uh, we have Ancient Tomb into Sensei's Divining Top. Checking the top three. So Stephen Mulligan to six, and then we uh, had uh, Mulligan to five. Okay, Eric is starting off with uh, Tomb into <laughs> Top into Mox And plays into... one less cards than Eric Stephen has in the table. Yeah, and I think that's an Engineer. But I can't make out whether that's a Goblin Engineer or not. It might be a Welder. It has to be a Welder because he didn't tutor. It doesn't... Let me pull up the Goblin, Goblin Welder art. But I, I... Yeah, it looks like a Welder to me. I think you're right. Yeah. Yep. Sure is. That's a Goblin Whale. It's um, flickering on the stream. I just need to reinstall everything from scratch. Sure. So, while we're figuring this out, looking at this potentially very explosive start yes. from Eric, I need to show... Okay. <laughs> so, we got a Pointer Saurus tonight. That's the start of this. Pointer Saurus, the largest pizza in the Western Hemisphere, probably. Uh, I don't care to check. Pizza. Yes. Yeah, I don't. It's whatever. Yep. It's 40 inches which is outrageous. It doesn't fit through the door. No. We have to tilt it to the side. Bend it. And so half of the, well, a line of the pizza slices are compressed. That's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. Now, as somebody who lives in St. Louis, we we both do, it is a tradition to have square cut pizza. Yes. We have very flat crust style, very thin crust, whatever. Uh, Emo's particular, whatever. I love the triangle pizzas. Mm -hmm. I typically get about four of those. Now, in my entire life, entire life, I have never seen something with a pizza rate, pizza size to triangle piece ratio as incredible as this. Look at this. That is the triangle piece off of this pointer source. I am so proud. I'm going to get this bronzed. It's about a centimeter across on a 40 inch pizza. Just to just to mess up the metric, folks. It's immaculate. Yep. This has been the, the highlight of the night so far. Not even close. Yep. Hanging out with friends, who gives a crap? Uh, em Emery flipped a bunch of cards. There's a chromatic 
sphere, uh, a mox opal, and a couple lands. Uh, so Emery has lots of uh, lots of gas to pick back up. Um, there's an LED in play. I don't know. There's all sorts of crazy stuff happening from Eric right now. Nothing that's really like a big juicy target for Welder. But on the up other side of the board, we have Steven with a fetch land into a scrub land and then passing the turn. So we're doing fine. Metalworker staff is fine. Yep. Uh, there, there's lots of things that, that Eric could do. I just think most of them are far too slow for this format. Yeah. Uh, that being said, like the monoliths get him there 98% of the time. So uh, Eric's Whoa. just kind of looking for a win con, <laughs> it seems like. Yeah, uh, that's how it shook out against me. Yep. Um, I think that the draft that we all had was fairly interesting. Yes. Because we all kind of did fairly niche things. And despite all that, we really just didn't take the time to find sideboard. Oh, see, I disagree. I think this is the first draft where we had all the players actually lean into sideboards. Like, I'm not saying that we did it perfectly. It can always be better. But I think that this time, every player decided to take sideboard cards. And that I don't think it's ever happened before. It, they happened late, right? It was like now, round 40 that that happened. I think this is the first time that we've had a player. Oh, my God. Look at that card. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, but is that after a scoop? He only, he's only got one land on the battlefield. So that's him showing it, it's, right? He's e-tutoring for it. That's an enlightened tutor for a null rod. There we go. Uh, there's a response. There's, there's a hand up. That's a Levine hand up. Flag on the play. Oh, he's, he's uh, since his divining top in response. <gasps> Pact and negation? He can LED to cast a Pact and negation. Is that on the, in the top three? Yes. Oh my god, this wait, is wait. the sweetest game in the world. Uh, Eric but, wait, is but he has about he, it. But he has to, he has he to, has to, dis- he has to discard his hand in yes. response. <laughs> yes. It's still the correct play. Oh my god. That is incredible. That is beautifulous. God, Pact of Negation for the e tutor Null Rod. And, uh, with having, having a Goblin Engineer or Goblin Welder on the battlefield... Like get makes back the LED. To, and like whatever else is in his hand because there's like a 85 percent chance it's also an artifact <laughs> that might just be better for him. Oh my god! Yeah, there's a goblin cannon. There's a goblin cannon that he had to discard off the LED. That's the call. Oh Good my god! God, that's incredible. This format's the best. It's absolutely the best format. Okay, so getting <laughs> the top that that's not shocking. Oh. <laughs> Whoops, I'm just <laughs> hanging out here with my little divining top. I'm just put that back on the battlefield. He can Emery, Emery to get back to the yeah. LED, maybe? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have any hand, cards in his hand to lose. No. And, like, you don't want to play the Zerta yet, but... Why not? Use the LED. I mean, if you, you've got the Emery, play an LED for free. Use the three mana. Discard your hand. To bring something into your hand. Sure. I'm, I'm just super scared. Cause in my mind, if I'm Eric, I'm like, okay, I'm going to cast LED every turn from now on and just have zero hand for the rest of the game. And yeah. that's that's the way I'm living my life. Uh, I don't know if that's actually what he's thinking or not, but Emery's going to get back something, probably the cost zero. Maybe the Great Furnace and maybe the... Oh, I, I bet he's reading Emery right now to see if he can get the Great Furnace. Let's check her. No, he got the LED. Okay. Because, yeah, you have to cast the card. So you actually cannot get Great Furnace off of Emery. Because I'm, I'm willing to bet he would have rather had the well, Great Furnace in play. I mean, you can still target it. You just can't cast it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. You can target it. That's true. Yeah, the Chromatic Sphere would have been the other choice there. Um, I, I think that eventually he's going to get back that Goblin Cannon. But, okay, very slow. But there's an Ancestral Recall with Suspend. Oh, Kataki Wars Wage. Oh. That LED is going to be paying, doing a lot of work this game. Uh. Uh, no, I mean, the yeah, LED pays for yeah. everything. Right? <laughs> and so it's just, all right, cool. Uh, sacrifice the LED. Pay for my... The other two. Just two. And, and float the top. So he gets to use the top as well. The Lion's Eye Diamond I mean, every turn gets so to pay it for basically the says that the Emery Lion's Eye Diamond yes. is just a wash. That's what we're dealing with at this point. 
That's uh, Oriac Salvagers off the top, by the way. Okay. Uh, Oriac Salvagers does not a thing right now. Wait, why not? Doesn't it win the game with LED or Infinite Man with LED? I think Oriac Salvagers pay two mana to return the LED, activate LED to get Infinite White Mana, and then Infinite Mana of the regular color. I don't know if he does anything for him yet. Oh, then he can welder. He can welder. He can welder the goblin cannon. cannon and win the game. That should be it. Yeah, he just won. I don't know if he has all the white mana, and I haven't done the math, but yeah, he has all the cards he needs to win the game right now. Oh God, this is the sweetest. Uh, I don't know if he can cast. Yeah, he can't. Oh, he paid. He paid the cost. He just got rid of the top. He put the top on top, and paid for it with the ancient two instead. Okay. So he has five mana. Let's pull up Salvager. I think it costs four. Yeah. Well, he can't He can't activate the Lion's Eye Diamond to cast Salvagers. Uh, correct, correct. So he needs the four initial mana. So he should have used the LED to pay the upkeep cost, and then he could have cast the Salvagers. I don't know so he he have, didn't he didn't know that he was going to get salvagers until after he'd already decided to he activate did. the top. He tops right? it at the end of last turn. I I don't know I've not done the math right, but in my mind, if he knows salvagers is the next card, he could have paid the upkeep cost with LED, and then I think it would have worked out. But either way, like unless Steven has another banger, uh, he has it next turn. <sighs> yeah. This bourbon is incredibly sweet, but very good. It's like a it's like if Fireball was good. That's pretty spot on, actually. Yeah, that should be their marketing slogan. I, <laughs> you know, Doctor P. There's a there's, fans, there's there's a good chance that they're owned by the same company <laughs> because uh, we just do monopolies now and yep. uh, in capitalism. Look, I'm a huge fan of Budweiser, so I'm on board with this plan. Yeah. Okay, Dream Render. That means that that is gone. No more graveyards. Exile. Is it gone? Right, because he's activating it right now. Yeah. Wow. Well, assuming he minuses it, which he can't not. So, all right. So then, yeah, the mox is gone. Dear God. Wait, what? What? Wait, what is that? I don't... Is that's, that the chromatic, that's a chromatic star? sphere. Wait, why did you do five? It's only, it should only be four. Hold on. Hold on. I can. Let me grab him. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I think Eric's uh, been hitting the sauce. Eric hasn't been hitting any sauce, but I'm kind of drunk right now. <laughs> Looks like I can't uh, I count. I the Mox, the Mox Ruby as well. Oh, okay. That's why. Mox Ruby is the Listen. best one. It's not a bad thing for us to be hyper vigilant. Right. Okay, we care about this format. We just need the we needed the hair dryer. The hair dryer would have solved all this. I don't know what that reference means. Oh, see back it in. It looks like Ashiok is face got blown off by a hair dryer a little bit. That's pretty good, right? A little bit. Mm. I don't like feel so good, Mister Stark. Yeah, that kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, no. So back in VRD three or four, we decided we wanted the booth to be able to tell the table if they did something wrong. And we didn't have any way of alerting them, like a buzzer or something. So yeah. instead, we hooked up a hair dryer to a to a, a and a that we would plug controlled in controlled plug in, and That's... then you could on your phone hit a button and it would turn the power onto the hair dryer. And you the know fact what? that it you worked, it worked. I... What engineer came up with that solution? That was me. That was me. Yeah, of course it was. That was a rhetorical question. Look, I don't have a buzzer, and I do have a hair dryer, so I stand by my solution. I... <laughs> Hey, does that not is that's not ineffective? You don't want to or, yell into the microphone. Well, here, for this, this high quality here, here, stream here, we have here. As an engineer, here's my invention. Hey. <laughs> oh my god, my nose just starts bleeding. Uh, you want to step out a minute? <laughs> yeah. I'm, okay. I'll be well, back, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes VRD gets so impressive that it literally causes people to have uh, bodily reactions. You know. That makes sense. Can you verify that uh, Eric lost that match? I won. Er Eric won. Okay. Well, we missed that because we were too excited by uh, by Brandon's uh, nosebleed. So I'm sure we're going to hear all about why that happened in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, Eric Eric ends up 2-0. Well. 
So Eric, let's let's hear all about how you won. Uh, Brandon literally had a nosebleed over how excited he was, so we lost track of what was happening there. So I made infinite mana with uh, Salvager's LED yep. by replaying L LED from my graveyard with um, uh, what's it called? You know, Emery. Yep. And then I can weld out Monolith to get Sphere. Yep. And I have infinite mana with LED uh, Salvagers, and because I I can because Sphere costs one. I can then use my infinite mana to recur sphere infinite as, as much as I need to, draw mm -hmm. my deck, and I have Ballista in my deck. And, and the, the additional white, uh, the second white, came from the LED? Is that the, the LED. First time? I can make three, three white off the LED. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, I used three mana uh, to get three white, and then you got the Salvagers. Salvagers came... I had, a, I had a mana confluence for the first white. There we go. Okay, so then yeah, once it was already in That's play, when I went from eight cracked. to seven. Cool. Yep. And my that hand tracks. doesn't matter because Ballista's in my deck. Yes. That is great. Uh, so do we know who's going to be on next? Uh, I mean, I don't know. If you want me to keep playing, we could play. I'm up for that. Okay, let's do it. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, so, so we're going to have Brandon and Steven here. Let me, uh, Eric will stay in the same seat. Or, well, oh, oh, yeah, no, that, that sounds great. You, or, or Steven can stay in the seat, too. You can play Steven. I can take a break. Okay, perfect, yeah. yeah. So let's, uh, we're going to have Eric stuff out for a minute. Uh, we're going to have me drop over there on the right side. So I'm going to update standings here. Uh, Brandon will stay in the booth, and this puts Steven at one and one. Our first loss of the uh, St. Lotus crew coming into this Discord. And obviously, we're playing each other for three or four of the players there, so it's uh, inevitable that it will happen. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a, it'll be an exciting time. So this matchup, me versus Steven, I'm gonna need to take my computer over there and I'm gonna, let's, let's analyze, let's see what I'm gonna be figuring out against Steven. Uh, his deck is, his deck is gonna be obviously winning off of Painter Grindstone. Tasha's Hideous Laughter is gonna be incredibly powerful against me. Uh, I'm worried about Null Rod out of his board because a lot of my win cons are, are uh, artifact based. And I'm, I mean, he also has Remand and other interaction like Flusterstorm to interact with me. This feels like a pretty bad matchup for me, to be honest. So, um, game one I think is going to be very different than games two and three. In game one, I'll probably be focused on like counterspelling his stuff and just keeping under control until I can win the game. And in games two and three, I'm going to just be praying that he doesn't draw all of his hate, because he has like four hate cards that are all bonkers against me. So, uh, I'll let Eric come in here and, uh, and talk through the match a little more in detail and tell me all the things I'm missing. Uh, I'll uncheck the winners here because we have match records correct, but the uh, the actual winners of the games could be still interesting. And yeah, have fun. Thank you, Eric, for talking about it. Absolutely. Hi, everybody. I'm eating pizza like a professional. Brandon's in the other room bleeding right now, so we'll see if he comes or not. Or it might just be me with my mismatched shirt and jacket. I look great. How's everybody doing tonight? By everybody, I think I mean hyphenated. Hey, hyphenated, how's it going? So it looks like we have Steven, who's got this very controlling Esper deck with these Planeswalkers. Feel kind of sick? That's a bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. At least you're in good spirits. At least you're watching VRD. Like, how bad can it be? Is it still the same thing you were talking about the other day? Or do you think it's something else? I don't, you don't. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. You do whatever you want. I'm not your boss. So we got Steven with his very controlling uh, deck with some planeswalkers. We got the Ashiok. We got the other Ashiok. We got the Tasha's, and then we got the Painter Grindstone. So Steven can either pump out a combo win. He can do that early with Mana Crypt if he wants to, or he can play the long game. Use cards like Dovin, Prismatic Ending. You know, to really take things long, get some value with Esper Sentinel, play Propaganda. And then kind of tick things down with like Kaya, the other Planeswalkers. He also has Knowledge Pool. In, he has Moat in his main deck. He also has Knowledge Pool, which is amazing. Did you know Steven, Steven has Knowledge Pool in his deck? Uh, yes. That's wild. He has Knowledge Pool, which is super obnoxious. His Teferi's Puzzle Box. It's very rude. Yeah. Here's the thing. It costs six, so I don't care. <laughs> if if he can cast it, he deserves to win. You got sick at the same time as the booster hyphenated. That sucks. That's the worst time because it's like you get the you get the boosty you get the boosty ailments and then you get the regular ailments. It's terrible. No. 
Wait, you got COVID like the day after you got a COVID booster? No, I don't think he, he, oh. he got, he got, he just got, it sounds like I mean, he just got a, like a, like a cold. Okay. Sounds like a cold, which is, I don't, I would not, that would be no good. And then Mark, talk a little about Steven's deck and then Mark's deck. Well, I hope it's not COVID. I hope it's just a cold. Mark's deck has, Mark's, Mark's the Time Vault Tinker deck, but then I bullied him out of all the good artifacts, so he has all the bad artifacts. Good work. Um, <laughs> Proud of you. But yes, Urza, which I wish I had. Tezzeret, you know, which I don't care about. No land, Ooh. or one land for... He's no, got two. Island, he had, he had island, Stark Steel Citadel. He's keeping, he's got Oko in hand. Okay, I mean, how many green sources does he have? Um, we don't I, really have an update on that. I don't have that, but I saw him. I know he has he has botanical sanctum. He has, I think, Yavamaya Coast or something like that. Here, I can pull it up on my Yeah. Phone. Sounds Here, great. hold on. Let me move. The most adorable oh piece of pizza in the history of the world. The tiniest triangle of so, all time. So friggin' cute. He has Chrome Mux. He has the Flooded Grove. He has Carpet of Flowers, too. It's wild. Tree of Tales. There's a few growths uh, or Bark Channel Pathway. You know, you know how Mark feels about pathways. Mark loves pathways. Oh, uh, I would say that I think he's the only person in our group who likes who thinks that they're better than duels. Yeah, Mark thinks the pathways are better he, than the types. So duels. for Mark, it goes uh, Ravnica Common Bounce Lands. Yep. Pathways. Mm -hmm. Uh, duels. Uh. The Mir shock. The no, Mirage the, the, fetches are somewhere in here too, right? I I'm trying to remember. I think it's the gain line, gain life lands from mm -hmm. originally from oh, Cons like, of Tarkir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salty. Blossoming sands and all like, that stuff. Like salty sand. Salty, <laughs> salty sand. Mark's favorite land. It, yeah. Oh man, boy, boy, howdy! Does he love that salty sand? <laughs> and then it's like, okay, the fetch lands. Yeah. And then he doesn't he. I, He's on the fence about whether he wants to pay one life or wants to bring it into play tap. Right. I don't know. He doesn't know. Who am I to say? I'm not a magic professional. Oh yeah, the uh, the the Enter the Battlefield Tap Pain Lands. I love those. Yeah. Love those. Yeah. Like a Scar Land, for example. Oh. You know, it's they're underrated. So yeah. Uh, he loves some pathways. So Steven How many does he have? I don't know because that's what I was supposed to be one, doing. One one pathways. He has Bark Channel Pathways. One Green, green source. Green. Ooh, Mark has Mark has Tinker and Darksteel Citadel both in his oh, hand. Wait. I drafted Misty Rainforest for no reason other than to keep somebody off of Oko. I did that. <laughs> You're I the best. I could have had Windswept Heath. You're the best. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice That's work. what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Starting slow here. Nobody's playing their whole hand on turn one. I guess I really don't understand this game anymore. Yeah, I thought you were supposed to play your whole hand game one. Or my attention one. span isn't made for this. I'm bored <laughs> as hell. This is crap. Yeah, our match was great. We just vomited our hands on the table and just <laughs> went off. Steven's going to 18 off of something. What am I doing? Wait. You were looking up a deck list, I'm, I think? My... My head is woozy. It's because of all the blood loss yeah. from your bloody nose. You you've lost you've lost you know at least one blood token worth of blood. I, I possibly two. I'm thinking it's a, it's a three. Where that we're on a three or oh boy. I mean it's a slow game. Yeah, it's a slow game. It's dove in hand of control for Steven, and that's a miscalculation from Mark. That's going to keep Mark oh. able to cast his spells, which is nice. Mark's ooh here comes we we could see Tinker here. We could see with, Tinker for Blight Blightsteel because he's going to play the Dark Steel Citadel. Okay. He has oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He does have. He that could tinker hand. up that Colossus and say your move, but if Steven has to ferry Time Raveler, that could be disastrous. Do it. Do it's it. happening. Do it. Here we go. No. Show me that blade steel. Your time. <laughs> yeah, Steven's got. Steven's got at least one out here. He's got the Time Raveler. I think that might be it. That appears. Ooh. Eh. Propaganda wouldn't do it, but if he could play another land and move. Propaganda is in the sideboard. It's in the main. It's bolded. I don't know. Is it? It says it's bolded. He could play mode here. He could play another white source in mode. That'd be sweet. Oh, no. He's dead. 
I don't even damn shame. <laughs> no, he's only got two poison counters. Yeah, it's only two. Uh, all right, flag on the play. <laughs> Excuse me, Judge. Yeah. I was at the store championship earlier today, and I, I was saying something to my opponent, like, like, you know, they were like, oh, I, I did this out of order, so I can't do this. No, it was like, I, I, I asked you if this resolved before I resolved my Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger, so I don't get it. And I was like, I don't care. You can have your Dragon's Rage Channeler. You're fine. And I was like, if we called... It, my, the people at the next table were like, what? I was like, yeah, if we called a judge, it would go different. But it's a 12-person store championship. I don't care. And then out of the corner of my ear, I hear, did somebody say judge? I was like, no, absolutely not. Very much, We super don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where Eric got in trouble because he said, shut up, you idiot! Go to hell. And then he got kicked out of the event. <sighs> Ugh. Also, his job is in jeopardy. Yeah, my job Oops. is in jeopardy, and I have nobody to watch my snails because that's the guy who's going to watch my snails while I'm gone. Uh, somebody just became an go farmer. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry. I uh, bet you have an emotional connection with those uh, things. One of my snails died yesterday. <laughs> I don't see me feast. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, c'est bon, c'est we, bon. we have a... Uh, <laughs> you know what? This is just... Uh, we, listen... I made that joke at your expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that we it's would healing. be even. It's part of the healing. Yeah, from the lawsuit joke earlier. Yeah, yes. yes, it's part of the healing. We're healing. Glad we put that out on Twitch. <laughs> I made a joke about lawsuits. It has nothing to do with Brandon. It doesn't have anything to do with him. He's just, Brandon's just very nervous about ever getting sued. Did you know Brandon's never been sued? He's very nervous about it ever happening to him. Yep, that's a statement. It's okay. Only hyphenates watching. You don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, all right. Where are the... <laughs> You're still looking Who's at the deck? deck? Am, whose deck am I looking Mark's at? Mark's deck. Mark's, Mark's deck. deck. It's garbage. No one cares. <laughs> he just won. He won. He beat uh, Steven. Oh, we about to go this. Dude, yeah, the French started. Okay, all so right. we're good. Nobody heard you. Nobody all heard right, me. Whatever. Oh, he's bringing in seed time. He's bringing in carpeted flowers and something. Hydroblast? No, that's can't be right. Something else. Something blue. Another card. One of them cards. Hyphenated is from Oregon. Oregon, oui. Ah, ouais, hein? Ah. C'est. Dans les États-Unis. Mm. Vraiment. <laughs> Et c'est pas à la est, c'est à la ouest. Yes. <laughs> All right, here's his list. Okay. He has one, two, Three. He's counting the pathways. Not pathways. <laughs> Four. Five. Blue sources. Five, green, five sources. green sources. And chromatic star and chrome box. Okay. Six, seven. Carpet of flowers. That's that in the sideboard. is a source of flowers. <laughs> it's his one and only source of, of flowers. flowers. <laughs> So what do you think? Which of, of since you haven't played against Steven or Mark yet, looking at these decks, are you afraid of either of them? No. Okay. I have no more questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm fine. I mean, like, I'm not afraid. Mmm. Or is it coming out? That's weird that Steven gets to start with three lands in play. <laughs> Fucking nerf Steven. You guys want to see something cool? Yes. Folks, that's blood. I don't know if you've ever seen blood no, that's, before. that's brain matter. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool, right? <clears throat> you probably have more of that. It's fine. Probably. I hope so. <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, I thought that this, that tonight was mm-hmm. going to go a way that it is very predictably gone, which mm-hmm. is who shuffled their deck best. <laughs> yep. And uh, as we saw... It literally just came down to whether Corsair of Crufix or Forest was on top for me. Yep. Between our match, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you had Echoing Truth in your hand. But I don't remember anymore. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that's a, that's the kind of shenanigans we're getting yeah. down and funky with. Deeply uninteractive combo decks. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, uh, I feel like that's what's going to happen between me and Mark. Yes. I'm not afraid of it. No. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. Uh, I think that the game between Steven and I will probably be considerably more interesting. Yes. Uh, They'll actually be playing against th- each other. I think that it will probably be the most...
most interesting match of the evening based on <laughs> what decks we've all brought. Let's uh, stream these it. amazing matches. Say three people with uninteractive <laughs> combo decks and Steven. <laughs> the thing is that, well, yours is a combo deck. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's absolutely a combo deck. Yeah. And then Mark, Mark's is a combo deck. Yes. Mine is a combo deck. I agree. Yeah, we emptied my bottle of KO. It's gone. There was, there was only like a third of it left. Is not a combo deck. Not a combo deck. Definitely more it of a It is control a control deck. deck. Yeah. With a combo finish. Yeah. Or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He can just or, toss or he, you. Or, well, yeah, he can just... Like, it's a... It's a mill bow. Yeah. It's all no, about not mill bow. It's... Con- oh, I was about to say... Nope. Nope, not there's, that. There's children. Well, they're, <laughs> they're not in this room. That's true. They can't so, hear you. Yeah, they do, they don't have access to Twitch because you have to be 13 to click. I am a 13-year-old. <laughs> now, I don't know if you had the internet when you were under 13, but I did. <laughs> the internet <laughs> existed? Yeah. I'm only 37 years old. The internet existed a little did. bit when I was under 13. Oh, yeah. It was very bad that's, and slow. That's right. I Because I was thinking, I you know, DSL didn't really come about until like 1998. I'm not going to say the thing I was going to say. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't worry about okay. it. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> hey, and we're Good back. times, everyone. <laughs> the internet's like 50 years old. That's true. My father-in-law was using the internet on punch cards. Click, click. <laughs> that's the sound of the internet in 19... 19- he he has a he has a stack of punch cards that he and his like programmer friends in school uh, made like a primitive game of Uno on the back of yeah because Uno didn't exist yet but it was one of those things where like if the game was going around and you needed some index cards or something and hot, hot, hot. His computer punch cards <laughs> ooh okay we got Twister Oko some lands Muddle and something uh, I believe that was uh, Transmute Artifact ooh Transmute Artifact where do you get the eye of that. Maybe it was... Uh, oh, uh, that's not great for Mark, who just drew his Blightsteel Colossus. Oh, no. That's no good for him. Get freaking wrecked, Mark. Now, I, I don't know why people aren't playing cards that let you shuffle these cards back in your deck. Cards like Sea Beyond. Cards like Credit Voucher, which no one has ever heard of. I haven't heard of either of those <laughs> cards before in my entire life. And Sea Beyond is like... One in a blue, like, draw two and then shuffle a card from your hand back in your deck or something. It's not good. <laughs> Don't play it. Stop. No. <laughs> Credit uh, voucher is even I, worse. Okay, so, so Sam, my partner, is uh, in the other dis- online Discord draft uh, and just drafted a deck fairly similar to Mark's. I'd say there's probably a... 20 card there's a lot over, of overlap 20 card overlap uh it's a merfolk Ooh, or nice. mermaid as sam likes to describe it nice uh you know kind of flair to it but we were just talking today about how you get blight steel back which is why it was down to the last pick and the question was do i go some do i go with something that just combos with Thassa's Oracle, mm-hmm. or should I draft something else? And I was like, well, you can't splash at this point. Right. And I think you just go with Jace Friend's Prodigy because, number one, it's an insane card where you can flashback Ancestral Recall, and that alone makes it worth it. Including recall, in your deck. Time, time Warp, or Time Walk too, right? No, no Time Walk. What am I thinking of? I don't know. Uh, something else good. There's other yeah, good there's, there's good stuff. Tinker, I guess. Tinker, sure. that's the one. Uh, but, like, you know, those are things that you can do. Ah, uh, Mark is discarding Blightsteel to hand size. You know what? That'll the, do it. The least ideal way to do that. <laughs> because that just means you missed a couple of land yeah. drops while your opponent was doing that. Yeah, Steven's on five land, just sitting on this Esper Sentinel like, sure, you know, don't do anything. That's fine. I will just beat you down. And here's Dovin. Yep. And that, yeah. So this is why that's not a great time no. to do that is because... Well, Mana leak. Oh, remand. Get remoint it. Nice. I'll remind you of <laughs> how to. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll remind I'm, you of how I've to. I've lost know. a lot of blood. <laughs> that much. Shut up, Grandma. I thought it was brain matter. I guess either way is better. Uh, well, um, brain blood. The, the blood brain 
barrier. Yeah. Yes. Is in my head was <laughs> the brain came out of the nose. Blood came elsewhere. I have an ulcer. Is mm, I'm I'm wearing this. Wearing depends. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, so we have not yet ticked down because <laughs> it turns out that Mark doesn't have a useful permanent. Yeah, Mark Big still two, doesn't. Two for Chromatic Star. Well, serves you right for stealing Chromatic Star from its rightful owner, me. <laughs> this guy right here, Von Darno. <laughs> hey. So, uh, oh, there's Oko stranded in the hand. I don't have a green sword. Wait, does he have a green sword? He has that botanical he sanctum under there, but uh, that's... Oh. I don't have an artifact. Guess what? Draft more artifacts. <laughs> Stop getting outbid by your good friend, Eric Raging Living. It's true. It turns out, if you let me take a non-interactive He'll combo keep deck... keep doing it. I'll just keep taking the non-interactive keep combo deck. Watch out. I didn't know I wanted to do that until, like... Because I, I took Ruby, I was like, I'll play red. And I took Soul Ring, and then I took Mana Vault. I was like, wait a minute. I can just take all these big mana artifacts and do something stupid. Yeet. I did. Yeah. I mean, it's not stupid if it works, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's not true at all. It's still stupid. There's a lot of stupid things that I do that still <laughs> work. still work. Looks like a demonic tutor for Steven. Steven getting ready to set up some kind of combo. <sighs> it's just fun that Goblin Cannon is uh, a legitimate yeah. thing. See, because... I was trying to draft Walking Ballista. Right. And you took... That was the biggest whiff of my draft, was that I was trying to take it the round that you took it. Oh, my gosh! He he goes Broco for Oko? Yep. Looks like Oko's here. I don't know how helpful that is, though. Um, I mean, it's an Oko. It's an Oko. So which means that the good. game is going three turns longer than we want it to. Yeah, well, it's already happening with with uh, with uh, Dovin, right? Be, We're sure. We're doing that. Mark's going to make a food here. No, no, that's a plus one. Oh, he's looking for another dice. Plus two, yeah. yeah. We're there. We're there. We're on six. We got okay. a food token. Uh, oh, yeah, it starts out on... Yeah, on Never four. mind. It starts Never out mind. on four. I'm just, so very used, reasonable. I'm just so used to turning my Pentad Prisms oh, into yeah. three threes. I got that one, too. I got Pentad Prism. Love that card. Now, am I allowed to take credit for popularizing that in yes. VRD? Yes, I think okay. so. I, all right. Ooh, I, Kataki up gets the food. Yeah, I keep kept having yeah, like I okay. would wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat and be like, "These are my next three VRD picks." <laughs> write them on my phone and go back to sleep. And I remember the Pentad for some night. I was like, "Thank you, Brandon." I went back to. Sleep. I was like, "I'll text Brandon in the morning," and then I didn't because <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute, he's in the draft with me. I'm not gonna tell him." <laughs> Did it look like my deck was going to use Pentad for some? <laughs> Do you, okay. <laughs> do you think that there is any profit for me in the predicting what Brandon is going to do industry? Because I feel like there's not. <laughs> well, okay. Here, here's how you know mm-hmm. whether it's okay or not. Is I start typing in all caps. Well, I guess it's fucking fine if you fucking know what I'm drafting now. Because this person decided to start drafting boggles and take my goddamn windswept heath. <laughs> Which I thought was going to be the tenth fetch land to go. It was instead what, like the third, the third or something. <laughs> fucking stupid, unbelievable. <laughs> and so, I, well, I didn't actually really care because no. it, it didn't. There's that doesn't though. matter to doesn't me. Matter at all. Uh, so, Ooh, yeah, Dark Steel Sentinel is an indestructible three three. But uh, once I start cap- typing in all caps <laughs> and uh, say uh, say some outrageous statement, yes. that's how you know that I've signaled what. Right. I've intended to do, and there's nothing of surprise left on the Nothing board. will change at this point. Right. And that was like round seven. Uh, no, because it wasn't at the Windswept Heath. It was at the... It was at Rancor. Oh, I think of right. all things. Rancor. Because that the was... Round that was the boggle. The, right. That was like uh, one of two auras mm-hmm. that I was going to draft. Uh... And then Swifty and I came to an agreement. I, yeah. I messaged him. I'm like, do we really want to mess up both of our drafts over this? And I'm like, are you going to draft like any of the enchantments? He's like, no, no, no. I was like, oh. okay, well, that's bad. Like, you should. You but, should. But, but okay, if you're great. agreeing not to, I will not touch an aura. This is our truce. Goodbye. Hang yeah. on. Steven has to pay one for his sentinel. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Stop. Stop the presses. Stop. Stop things. Alright. Halt the bueno! Hang on. Hang on. Uh, 
it turns it turns out that Stephen only tapped his planes uh, four degrees, and so legally speaking, he has to tilt it at least eighty four degrees in order for it to be considered tapped. Uh, when it is concerning a live audience. <laughs> uh, so that has been remediated, ficated, adjusted, and all is well. He says, thank you, Cody. <laughs> thank you, Cody. What are we talking about? Blood, enchantments. Uh, enchantments. Oh, yeah, yeah. Enchantments. Um, you're welcome, <laughs> Cody. Uh but, you know, at that point, I was just like, okay, I won't take Ethereal Armor. I won't take Rancor. Ethereal Armor seems very good. Yeah, but, that's but I'll leave off, I right? Will, I will, as long as you're not going to threaten me for the next 30 rounds over Sithis and Argothian Enchantress. And, right. And, All know, these engine cards that yes. you need, right. Then we're groovy. The fun thing about VRD is, the spe- especially in person, but apparently also in Discord... You can just talk to the other people yeah. who are drafting and say stuff. You can talk a lot of shit <laughs> to the other people. And it is very fun unless you lose to them. <laughs> How long have we been live? Uh, I don't know. Like Two hours? An maybe? hour and a half? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had two matches so far. And now we're in our, our third. And three whiskeys before we started broadcasting. Just a lot of whiskey before we started broadcasting. You know, good idea, Juice. Blame it on the juice? <laughs> <laughs> That's Lizzo. It is. Knowledge pool is in play. I don't know what it does. I think that Mark should scoop. Let's put, let's put knowledge pool up on the board. I don't know how to use Wait, this. Wait, why is Steven one uh, I don't know. That's wrong. Where's that document? I think you have to unlock it. No, it's in. It's in like a, a, a text document. Oh. Open player left. You want a a promo spell seeker from VRD Devo and you don't know what to do with it? Uh, yeah, Cube and CEDH are both. Relevant places for that object. Knowledge pool imprint, much like Isochron Scepter. Yeah. Or Chrome Mox. Those are cards I have heard of. Yes. Anyways, when Knowledge Pool enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top three. Not two. Not four. Not four. Three of their library. Five is a right out. <laughs> When if every player casts a spell from the t- from his or her hand, that player exiles it. If the player does, he or she may cast another non-land card exiled with knowledge pool without paying that card's mana cost. I don't know what that means. So, Steve, so let's take an example. No. Is it a combo with Teferi? <laughs> yes. Um, that's the idea. It's a combo with Teferi 3. So, like, you, you play knowledge pool, and then you play your Teferi 3, and then when they go to cast a spell... They exiled their spell into the knowledge pool, and then they try to cast the spell out of the knowledge pool, but because they're not doing it when they could play a sorcery, Teferi says you can't do that. So you just don't get to cast spells anymore. You don't call it three fairy. I don't know. I do. You you called it Teferi three. It's got it's got a lot of, it's, there's many names. It's got aliases. Anyway, Mark lost. Lost that game. Get wrecked, Mark. <laughs> Your blight steel can't save you now. So we're going to an exciting game three here. I like to I'm, three. F- <laughs> I'm just I'm just rooting for people to equalize between their wins and losses here. Yeah. So yeah. I've got two. I've got two of these matches left. You just you have but one. So uh, unfortunately, I hope you get wrecked. I appreciate that. I, well, I don't hope you get wrecked. I hope it's an exciting match yeah. and that you have fun. But I hope that you lose. I hope that you just get ground into paste by Mark. Brandon, uh, I love you, you too. too. Hey, <laughs> only once though. Yeah, because just we're just try- we're one and twos, twos and ones. Yeah, because we're a bunch of best friends. But see now, hanging out, just hanging out, having a good time. But see now that I'm, time. let's say, let's 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 call it what it is. Now that I'm St. Louis's best hope. 
Shouldn't you want me to win all of my matches? I've already won one. Yeah, but you've already, you've lost one, which I have not done. Okay, we still have the same number of wins. That's we're both incorrect. We're, we're, we're both <laughs> we're both one and X. That's not true. We're both one and X. I'm two and X. Where X is zero. Well, then I guess I'll have to win some more matches. <laughs> These pedantics. <laughs> Thank you, hyphenated, for the... Semantics? Uh, mountain quote. Mountain goats. Pedantics. Semantics. Semantics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, was he talk like that? We just went from Gilbert and I don't know. Out, of, out into the stratosphere very quickly. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my goodness. This is one of our most professional streams of all time. Uh, it's not even close, no, to be honest not with you. Even like, this one we can actually hear. Yeah. Or, I, I'm assuming you guys can hear. Nobody's yeah. been like, guy, please turn up the audio. Turn up the mic. I can't hear I can't hear Dick's This glad. is the dog shit microphone <laughs> of all time. Uh we are dealing with Audio Technica. Professional quality. Plugged in. <laughs> Oh, can you make like do sa- you have a soundboard? Yeah, of course I got a soundboard. This God. cost me fourteen hundred freaking dollars. I bet I have a soundboard. Does it? If you press, do those buttons do things? Those yeah, buttons. Yeah, it's really annoying. Do they make cool sound effects? Here, put this on. Okay, all right. Check I mean, they're check. beautiful, so of course I will. Okay, are you ready? I'm about to lose all my hearing. I assume. No. Okay. Cool. Wait, I have to turn up the volume. <laughs> Wait, no, no, it was on zero. I can hear things in it. It was on zero. Hold okay, on. I believe you. <laughs> Which one was that? Is it a laugh track? No, it's the um, theme song. Oh wait, is this the one that goes on for like forty minutes? Yes, oh, long. Long. I can just turn. I can just turn that off. <laughs> All right, that's beautiful. I'm so glad that you have that. Yeah, I need to deprogram that. <laughs> That's the the one time I pressed a button on on that thing last time. I think that the, was the button. I was I like, I assumed that it was like down here. No, it's right up in All the right. prime. So they're estate. they're playing again. Mark has a tree of tales in a library of Alexandria that it looks like he's actually for the first time in VRD history getting value of card draw from Library of Alexandria because it is a garbage card except for when Mark has it because Mark is the prototypical person to yeah. get cards from my library of Alexandria. Unfortunately, Steven has painter and grindstone. Look at that. What a dillweed. What a dillweed. Drawing, Drawing cards card with library, library of Alexandria. Unbelievable. It's honestly, it's embarrassing. I'm, I'm oh, ashamed. and he's, I'm ashamed. he's uh, so he's just, I mean, it's, we've got, it's painter grindstone time. Yeah, he's, so he's we're straight just up under the gun. If Steven has land, yeah. I don't know what Mark's plan yeah. is. Yeah, so this is this is basically game over unless there's some kind of Hercules recall, which guess what Steven, Steven has, has. Uh, uh, or Echoing Truth, which I have, or Solitary Confinement you doesn't have. help in this situation. Also doesn't help. <laughs> I mean, it does, but you can't cast it. No, I don't see a land in Steven's hand though. Uh, but Mark doesn't know that. And you didn't know that when I cast my Argothian Enchantress. <laughs> God, I'm... I, you know, I just... That stupid Corsair with its fat butt. <laughs> stupid 2-4. Can't do anything. Get Not out of... You know, get out of here. What, with your Kim Kardashians and your, and your, and your Jennifer Lopez's? You're breaking the internets. And, you, and your, that one guy from TikTok who's got a big bedoinker. Is there only one? No, there's like three of them. That's... I just... Two of them are like uh, problematic. Oh, okay. So there's only one. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just assumed that'd be a whole industry. It's it just like it, it is. It is. But you know, they rise, they fall. The much, butts. much like the jiggles in the movies. <laughs> no, the no jiggle lasts forever. Hey, do you think that if Mark keeps shuffling his hand, that he'll figure out which card will keep him from losing? <laughs> He's gonna find that answer. It's somewhere no, in won't. those seven cards. Turns out, He's gonna find it. It's not in there. Okay, so he's just. Like, okay, so basically I've got to play my chromatic sphere, chromatic star or whatever, and yep. then draw a card to get an answer, which I definitely don't have. I don't know what the plan is, but if yeah, Steven I... doesn't have a land here, which he does, okay, he's got yeah. air player beacon, he's going to activate grindstone. Mark's going to... He does have a blight steel. So. I, th- I think that this is down to one. 
Yep, we've got we've got a blight steel, and then the rest of the library is in the graveyard. That's just the blight steel. That's his library. So he's got he's got a chance. You know what? He should. Oh wait, he can discard it end of turn. He mm-hmm. can. Oh, I mean, but like you know, there it turns out Stephen has other ways to win. Yeah, game. he can he can discard it end of turn, in which case he doesn't do anything for the rest of the game. And Stephen will just like attack with a two two or something. He's got Esper set all. Mark, tap your library right now. <laughs> Draw a card. He has eight cards in his hand. I don't think that does anything. Add one colorless does mana Mark to your mana pool to draw a card with Chromatic Star. <laughs> does Mark have any way to get... He does. Cards back in his library? Yeah, he just discards the... No, like, more cards than that. So, okay. He has... Oh, my God. So he can play Oko. He has Oko in his hand right now, right? Mm-hmm. So he can play Oko with the cards he has. No, he can't because he, he needs blue. the blue mana and the chromatic star makes him draw a card. Mm-hmm. That is hilarious. Wait, and he loses by right. activating that, right? Yep. So. I'm not seeing it. If it's that, yep. Yeah. He agrees. He doesn't see it. And that's one for Steven. Taking this one home, two to one. Very nice. Good matchup. All right, I'm going to go place. Brandon's going to go battle one of these fools. I should probably play Mark. Cause yeah, because Steven's done two yeah. in a row. Yeah. Sounds good. Take your... All take, right, chat. Do I trust... You want me to take it? Take your lucky triangle. You can leave good, your phone, yeah, but take good, your lucky Good match, good match. Uh, you, that was brutal. couldn't play that Oko because of the draw trigger. The draw trigger off the chromatic star. Yeah, because right? yeah. that was my line. It just like I just constantly yeah. discard over and over. Right, and I you should... just you play the Oko, you discard forever. We talked about that. We we couldn't couldn't cast it. Didn't I have know. blue. I just didn't. I I went for that line instead of the uh, time vault double turn, like take mm-hmm. take alternative double turns. That oh yeah, could have also been okay. But I, that one I don't think was a winning line either. No, I don't, I don't think know. so. All right. Well, game two I feel good about how I played it. Game three was just I got luckied out. Uh, I don't know. I I probably could have done something better in game two there, but I didn't see the line. It's tough. This game, this game of Magic the Gathering. I don't know. I don't know what you could have done game two. Yeah. I'll be I'll be honest. We were. Uh, I mean, it was me and Brandon in here, so <laughs> we definitely talked about the game sometimes. No, it'd be, it'd be exciting. How do you discard after playing Oko? How do you discard after playing Oko? You would I, ask, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I can't after I get Oko in play. Uh, but then your library. Right. No, I think I'm dead still. Yeah. Uh, there was, in my head, there was some way to get back up to eight, and I don't think it's actually a thing. So it was not. That was me desperately searching. But also, a similar question: How do you discard after time vault? And you yep. don't. Uh, if I went the time vault line, I could have taken every other turn, take two turns, but each of those turns would have been just tapping or tapping time vault and untapping time vault. So right, it wouldn't have done anything. That doesn't actually achieve anything, unfortunately. Right? Yeah. But no, the, the chromatic star killing me immediately was something I didn't see. Even mm-hmm. if even though I could have won, which I could not have. So Brandon's got his lucky pizza triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and his lucky whiskey. Yeah. That 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 match with Steven went exactly the way I predicted, which is that game one I would dominate. Game two, he brings in counter magic, and I just can't I can't deal with both his like three sideboard cards plus him having counter magic. Yeah. He means he can just sit back for until he has two extra mana to counter my counter. Right. And at that point you had, I was sitting on two mana. You were going two mana to his five, right? Yes. Yeah. I just Which was just really rough. Out. Yeah. I also had Oko sitting in hand ready to get dropped for every yeah. turn. He was tapped out up to that point. I just couldn't cast it. There was like a slight window where I, I legitimately thought I could win just off of Oko plusing and yeah. eventually kill the fairy, but nah, couldn't get there. Didn't quite work out. Well, what do you think about this matchup between Steven and Brandon? I have not looked at how their ma- sideboards match up against each other. Uh, I haven't either. So Brandon's deck has, I mean, Steven has lots of answers, but I think yes. very few of them actually hit Brandon's deck. Right? No, I, has, think, I think so as well. Counter magic feels like the, the primary axis that this game's going to play on. I mean, there's little things like Opposition Agent being able to shut down Sterling Grove. Yep. Um, and like Aura Flux, or sorry, a Liliana of the Veil is, uh, is is obviously fine. But if, Aura Flux is the big play. But if Brandon can get something like that, yeah, uh, uh, absent Aura Flux, if Brandon can get something like Destiny Spinner down, he's going to have yes. a great time. Yeah, but no, that's exactly right. Like, 
as soon as Aura Flux resolves, I think the game is effectively over. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of in games two and three if Steven can get there with you, that. You can beat Kataki, but you can't beat Aura Flux. Right. It's too much. EE is pretty good in this matchup, too, actually. EE is very good here, yes. I was very sad when the EE got taken. Mm-hmm. It was, I wanted that for my sideboard, but. That card sure does have an activated ability. It so. sure does. <laughs> Do love permanence with activated abilities and only permanence with activated abilities. Man, and I mean, Brandon has a lot of like turn one, turn two explosive draws, and I think yeah. that if if he happens to hit one of those, he's gonna win handily. But oh, absolutely! If Stephen basically makes it to turn three or four, and Brandon hasn't exploded by then, I right. I favor Stephen. Yeah, no, it's it's a question of Brandon's opening hand, his ability to present that pressure, right? But something, you know, an, an exploration or fast bond open could really... So last question about the previous match, because I can't get it out of my head. Do you think I should have either mulled or not gone for the library line against him? Or is it I just got unlucky out? I think that? you got unlucky out, okay. to be perfectly honest. But sure. So Steven's hand, does he have enough lands to cast things? Uh, he has two. Okay. Uh, so no, not really. <laughs> Mode is pretty strong against Brandon, though. It yeah. is. I'm not sure who's on the play. I'm also not sure of that. I don't remember if that how that was decided. Though it clearly was. Looks like Brandon's on the play. I mean, he does have the lucky pizza triangle, so that's have... got to help him out in that yeah. line. I think Steven's hand makes sense to keep on the draw. That's why I was wondering that. Yeah, no, that's fair. The, the two lands are a bit dodgy otherwise. And I think he just top decked a land, so... I want Enchantress to work, too. I think it's sweet. And I, I think Brandon's, Brandon's deck has, like... I don't think Brandon's deck is bad. Yeah. I think no. it's good. Which is bizarre because there were two Enchanter players at the table, and right. obviously different angles and stuff. But right, we have Boggles, and then we have more of a like traditional Enchantress, Argothian Enchantress, Sithis, you know, yeah. engine card kind of deck. Totally. But you know, one of the one of the things about Enchantress in formats like Commander is a lot of the time you play your Enchantress, you play some enchantments, you draw a bunch of cards, and at the end you're like, okay, I have a bunch of cards and a bunch of enchantments, and I haven't actually done anything. Correct. And I think Brandon's deck actually, like, he has enough actual creature beaters to yes. do things about that. I think Catil the Dawnheart Martyr is a huge part of that. I think Monastery Mentor is also a big part of that. I think that's Scythus. Okay. So, yeah. this is, this is a, That's the next thing I was going to say, which is that in this format with 40 cards, you only need, like, three or four Enchantresses, and it's still great. Yeah. Uh, so, like, we're, we're in a great spot, regardless. Yavamaya is going to be a big help for Brandon with the uh, with the varied mana cost, lots of different pip, blue, green pips in his deck. Yeah, the, the number of uh, like that Esper Sentinel against me was just like back breaking. So yeah, like, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Steven drew like four cards off of that. I know, <laughs> and like again, it's because I sat on two mana. But Steven with the mana crypt, very willing to sit back, relax, wait for things to happen. Life totals just really don't matter in this format. Even with an Oko on my side of the table, it just still just didn't matter. I think life totals ma- might matter a little bit more in this matchup. Sure. I think, I think against Brandon, who is actually on the, like, fair you know, deck. couple of turns creature beatdown plan. Right. Like, against a fair deck, I think there's a lot more to it. Maybe, but like, he still has, I don't know. Like, yes, he is a couple of turns creature beatdown, but it's probably, like, literally two. Yeah. I think that is Destiny Spinner up there. We really need to work on those no glare sleeves. Yeah. I know Thurston's coming through on those, but still. He is, he is. And these are these are Brandon's sleeves ah. in particular that are that are glare horrific. See, we're playing normally with the like really like scratched up ultra throws on purpose yeah. because they're you can see them most of the time. Yeah, they're nice nice and scuffed, but yep. Brandon's Brandon's sleeves are pristine. Ah, it's no man. good. You can tell that's the Destiny Spinner because it has the, like, example image bar in the middle of it. I don't know where he got that image, but I love it very much. That's beautiful. I thought he was playing with all real cards that he just, like, pulled out of a cube or something, but mm-hmm. th- this is even better. Uh, there's there's definitely proxies in there. Okay, so Enlightened Tutor at the end of Brandon's turn. Yep. Uh, obviously, that normally finds one half of the Painter Grindstone combo if he already has the other half. Otherwise, finds some answer or just, like, grindy value piece. Yeah, Steven may just be looking for some way to delete some of these enchantments here, uh, yeah. some way to deal with Destiny Spinner. It's Teferi's Puzzle Box. All right. Okay, so that card, I know how it works with wheels. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it works in a fair game. What well, happens? Well, Steven does also have Narset, right? Sure. So, so Teferi's Puzzle answer. Box is is becomes unfair with Narset. Right. Um, in a fair game, of course, it just sort of makes things random and terrible. Okay. Looks like Steven's taking the hit off Mana Crypt here, going to 
So it's 16. Yep, because you already used the one fetch. Right. Puzzle box or Narset? Let's see. Looks like we're going to see Narset floating a mana. And puzzle box costs three? I believe puzzle box does cost three. Yes, let's, let's put that up on the board. And we have Narset sitting there at two or three. Uh, Narset finds balance. Balance Ooh. is obviously a pretty good card against a creature deck. Sorry, I don't like this version of Teferi's Puzzle no, Box. I'm going to click on a different one. So, yeah, and your draw step. Four mana. Dang. It's four. Okay. I knew it was too much. I didn't know it was that too much. Yeah. But Steven is setting up to just sort of start deleting Brandon's hand here. I mean, if I'm Steven, I'm blocking with this Esper Sentinel for days. Oh, just yeah. Basically, keep Narset alive, block, and then make Brandon lose a land and all of his board. Yeah. Pretty Sounds good. Sounds great to me. Lock. Probably give some cards, too. Yeah, the, the balance here is fantastic. Yeah. Although, yeah, the cards in hand, less of a concern with the puzzle box. All right, that's a Heliod. All right. This Heliod is confusing to me, but, I mean, especially... I It's not turned on right now, right? We have a Silas and a... Uh, Destiny Spinner, right? Spinner. So, so we're yeah. on two Devotion. So, sadly, balance can't finish off Heliod. No. That's always the best feeling. Yeah, now Heliod, I know Brandon had said that he had been hoping earlier in the draft to get the Walking Ballista, which I took. Yes. Um, but then he took Heliod quite a bit later. I'm not totally sure what his plan is for it, though I, I'm, it, it may just be like, it's an enchantment, I have a lot of white pips, which he does. Mm -hmm. Steven speculated that it was basically just to ensure that he would never lose a fair ground battle. Right. Uh, that he could just grant lifelink and win the game. And against goblins and against yes. um, boggles, that seems very reasonable. Looks yeah. like we've played Flickering Ward, which of course is <laughs> that's a reader for me. A fantastic piece of Brandon's card draw engine. Uh, it's a white mana. It's it costs a white, and you can return it to your hand for a white, and that's what's really important. <laughs> that's amazing. And it just has no text beyond that. I, uh, I mean, it may give something protection. It's uh, it's when you play it, you choose a color, and the enchanted creature creature gets protection from that color. So it's that actually can be quite right. relevant. Okay. Uh, it is awkward because choosing white, not really an option. Correct. Uh, it does, it, it'll last for a very short amount of time. Yeah, it'll flicker It'll flicker itself right into the old graveyard. Uh, it does not, actually. Apparently, it's been errata. Oh, it does? Oh, oh, oh. It's got the, it's got the white ward errata. This yes. text does not, this effect does not remove flickering ward. That's great. Yeah. Uh, obviously, back in the days of Tempest, when you were playing Magic yes. prolifically, that was not the case. But right. Now so that's, and that's when my sort of understanding of flickering <laughs> ward was developed on, you know, literally, like, on the ground at summer camp. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I have a lot of cards that I learned about, like, literally on a boat to an island where we just played magic and, like, got the cards all sopping wet. So oh, yeah, absolutely. Flickering Ward sounds like about the same kind Flickering of Flickering Ward's in that, in that category yeah. of card. Uh, so Steven's uh, minus Narset again, keeping mm -hmm. her at one. Uh, Brandon chose not to attack there. I guess he's just scared of the balance. Is that right? Well, he attacked with um, Destiny Spinner, it looks like. Destiny Spinner is tapped. Yes. But Silas stayed. But, stayed but Silas stayed, yep. Um... Not sure what we're scared of there. Is Silas a 1-1? One, one? Silas is a 1-2-2-2? Two, two, two? Harvest hand. 1-2. Okay. okay. So it could have made Could have gotten there. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe this is balanced consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would make sense, but if so, then I think you attack with nothing. But I, I don't know. It could also be that... Oh, is that a propaganda in play? Was that already in play? Oh, the propaganda was... Uh, maybe that just got played. Oh, I don't know. It seems like it just got played. I think it just got played because there's. I didn't, I didn't see anything else off. Because of Brandon played Heliod and Flickering Ward, and that was all his mana. And he still attacked, so I think it was just balance, balance care. Okay, and Brandon should lose a land, and mm -hmm. then I don't know hand sizes, but presumably something should happen there. Brandon is going to lose that land. Cool. Sure, that seems reasonable. Uh, is, is that it's some kind of dual land, a green white savanna ish land? What's the land there? It the is weird one. I think that's the uh, that's like an alt art temple garden of some kind. Okay. Cool. Looks like a temple garden. He's gonna get rid of the Yavamaya. Must not have any double green cards in hand. Sure. I don't know. I'd maybe he needs double white. I mean, maybe he's, he's got Catilda. Sure. Could be a Catilda thing. Because that's a pretty pretty reasonable card on this board. Because we've got three. It'd be a four four. Maybe he, maybe he really wants to turn off prismatic ending for three. Mm, possibly, <laughs> possibly. Know. There's there's some like real edge case scenarios there. 
I mean, tonight's game. Hey, how's it going, Swifty? Tonight's games are going great from my perspective. I think tonight's games are fantastic. Uh, as somebody who just lost a match, I feel less good about them. But overall, it's been really fun. Still, <laughs> we're having a good time. We're also only halfway through right now. Oh my lord! Because we decided randomly to hey, let's start a six <laughs> round tournament at EPM. <laughs> let's stream this. Let's start it at seven. Yeah. Let's just make a bunch of bad decisions. <laughs> it's okay. Around one a.m., we'll be really hating ourselves. Oh and yeah. Brandon will be passed out in that bed right here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Brandon's driving. <laughs> no. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Does Sam drive? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who drives. I never yeah. know anymore. We know we're getting Steven through his last match right now because he has two small kids here. He yeah. has to drive an hour home. Steven's got a, a ways to go. I live around the corner. Yes. I'm fine. You could literally walk home. <laughs> I, I could if I wanted to. It would take a minute, but I could do it. Uh, I, I think I've done it. It's like 20 minutes. It's yeah, not bad. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. No, I've, I've walked... 20, 20, no, because it takes me half an hour to walk, because it's up, I guess I'm walking uphill, but it takes me like a half hour, 25 minutes, half an hour to walk from my apartment to the Schnooks. Okay. So it's probably another 10 minutes from the Schnooks to here, but it's still doable. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I tend to walk basically everywhere without really paying attention to time and just like zone out to podcasts. Oh, I do so, the same thing. Yeah. I, I don't have any conception of time. I just, yeah, I, I just, I walk. I'm, I'm home, and I'm like, oh, it's been an hour and 20 minutes. Great. <laughs> yeah. I guess I got my steps in today. Fantastic. Exactly. I like the Brandon with the stacking of dice in order to track his life total. Now he's up to 22. Yeah. You're lucky it's not the pizza. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. God. <laughs> Just a small pizza slice on top of the D20. Just going to go ahead and serve here with the Destiny Spinner. All right, down to five life. So it's really a question of if, if Steven's going to win this turn or not. Bell just ring? Or is that a doorbell sound effect from something? I'm willing to bet the latter, but we'll find out. Yeah. I don't know. Sure, Somebody it's might fine. Call me. Uh, based on the other children's toys that are Yeah, playing. there's a lot of sound effects happening. There yeah. we go. Moat. Moat okay. has been dropped. All right, so Brandon's going to need to find a way to deal with that. What does he have main deck to deal with Moat? <laughs> uh, let's, let's look through. This is game two, right? This game is game one. one. Jeez, this has been a long game. This has been quite the game. I think the answer to what does he have main deck to deal with moat might be nothing. Okay, reasonable, reasonable. But he does have Katilda, which does fly. Uh, he has Force of Vigor. Is that in the sideboard? I'm not. I'm not looking at the. Uh, I'm, I'm not either. I'm just looking at the spreadsheet. I think yeah. Force of Vigor. I, I assume Force of Vigor is a sideboard card. Although in this format, it could very well be main deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would. I would definitely consider main decking it. Uh, but yeah, other than that, actually, I in this field, I think I would main deck Force of Vigor. There's a lot of artifact dependent decks and a lot of enchantment. Like, there are four decks that are you could easily call. Oh, well, it looks like this game ended while we were looking at deck lists, so that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll go ask. What I'm sure there. someone won this game. We're gonna find <laughs> out. You, you folks in chat might know who won, but we do not because we are idiots. <laughs> It sounds like Steven might have died to Mana Crypt. Is that what happened? Yes. Steven died to Mana Crypt. Moat will not save you from Mana Crypt. So I guess that was Brandon's out. Yeah, Brandon didn't need a main deck card. He needed <laughs> Mana Crypt to be cast on a Steven. He simply needed Mana Crypt. <laughs> now, Brandon's got that... Uh, you hate to see it. I mean, I don't. I, I love it. I love it when Mana Crypt kills people because I don't have Mana Crypt. <laughs> I love drafting Mana Crypt in round one. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still... Still feels great. Mana Crypt, a fantastic card. I had it in my first VRD in the same deck as the Time Vault combo. So that was an, an enchanting little piece of technology where I had to be very careful to divest myself of the resource that was Mana Crypt before taking all of the turn. Yes. You just hope to find your Tinker eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I had I had Tinker. I had Goblin Engineer. Oh, yeah. You're, had, you're doing uh, things the right way. I had Reshape, which Ooh. is, of course, not Transmute Artifact. Uh, it's Basically the same card. I, I think you can draft them in either order. It doesn't really matter, <laughs> is my opinion. Uh, I felt very good this draft when I took Transmute <laughs> Artifact. I was just like, I am redeeming myself. <laughs> yeah. I did enjoy the the, the Roto draft we just did at uh, the, for the St. Louis Presents, uh, where you uh, where you called out that fact and were very clear about which one was better. It was <laughs> Well, I have to, I have to educate my educate my co-commentator on St. Louis VRD history. Oh, I, I loved watching somebody die to their own Bob. Oh. They, they bobbed into Gristlebrand at the St. Louis. I saw, I saw that picture. Oh, just, you just love to see it. It's so good. Oh my gosh! You play also, Time Bolt and Bob together. Yeah, that oh that'll do it. That'll do it. 
I've watched Brandon side out Nissa in every match so far, so mm. I think that proves that Stephen was again wrong about Nissa and his uh, VRD Planeswalker ratings. Wrong about Nissa. Yep. Wrong about Narset. What else is Stephen wrong about? I mean, S- Stephen Hagen wrong for America. <laughs> <laughs> this ad has been paid for by the Painland Council. <laughs> I think Steven purposely made some pretty aggressive reads in that one, such as drafting, listing Ashiok as a number four or something, despite having a negative record. Uh, that I think we're there mostly for clicks oh, yeah. and as, uh, ra- rage views. As a writer, I understand that it's very important to write something that people are going to get mad about, mm-hmm. uh, because that is how you get those good clicks. My my article about like, you know, which which my editor very aggressively titled why you should de-optimize your EDH decks, which was not my suggestion, by the way. Thanks, Harry. Thank you for that. But I wrote an article about, like, the joy of making your decks worse for fun. Mm -hmm. And that has just, like, five times as many clicks as any of my other articles that month. And I'm like, great, great. Now I'm going to have to write more inflammatory content. (laughs) As a CEDH player, I deeply love that concept. And mostly, yeah. mostly like, and we, we, I think we're widely in agreement about this. It's yeah. just like you should have decks at varying power levels. 100%. Uh, and one of them should be incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, most of them should not be. Yeah, I have I have one deck that's just like there to there to do crimes. Yep. A few decks that play at like our usual power level of yep. like, we are trying to win the game after about a half hour. Yep. And then, you know, a few decks around the pre-con level. I'm look, really looking forward to your article on Conquest, the format. Oh, I'm legitimately excited about that and hope some other people decide to play it, too. Now, tell me more about Conquest. Uh, it is... It's Commander. Mm-hmm. You start at 30 life. Great. Uh, you have 80 card decks. You can Ooh. play Planeswalkers as your Commander. Okay. And you have 12 Commander damage. Okay. Uh, and the ban list is all the reserve list and all the fetch lands. Ooh. And then, and then like, it's CEDH power level is kind of the goal. That sounds fun. Yeah. It, it, like, it's basically, like, what will Commander look like in 10 years is kind of the idea behind it. Sure. Anyway, yeah. Uh, this game, there's a ponder getting passed by Steven, and both of their hands looked, uh, like, very fair, not incredibly fast hands. Both players, I would say, by my estimation, appeared to have cards in their hand. Seven, <laughs> if I understand correctly. I didn't see a turn uh, turn three kill off of Painter Grindstone from Steven, which is really a shame uh, when I'm not playing the game. I believe we have Fast Bond Zurin Orb here, followed by Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Yep, and not very many other lands. No. Yeah. So, nice hot exploration, or a nice hot Fast Bond start for Brandon, uh, playing his turn two land drop on turn one. It's really a shame that he doesn't have an Altar of the Brood there to really pay this whole thing off. <laughs> Oh, it's been it's been a little bit since Brandon drafted an altar of the brood, huh? He seems to have infected other players with the idea that card is playable despite it being terrible. Prismatic ending getting rid of that Zern orb for just a single white mana. What a fantastic versatile answer that card is. Yeah, I, I really do like Prismatic Ending. I also really, really hate Zern Orb. <laughs> Having recently cut it despite it being a nostalgic hit for me. Mm. For my commander deck. That's very sad. It is. Looks like we have, uh, that's the Sanctum Weaver. That's the mana uh-huh. one. Yeah, something. Sanctum Weaver. That is the name of the card. I got it right. It was played against me like 40 minutes ago. I should know it. <laughs> that's a Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Yes. Two. Okay, there's a Grothina Changeress. Three. I don't know what that card is. Just by the needle. Okay. Uh, that's a uh, Sylvan Library. Okay, so four, five, six, seven, Sterling Grove. Yeah. Something. Something else. Crucible. Crucible. Or 11. 12. This is scintillating. This is yeah, he's losing a lot. 16, 16 off the ley line. 20. That's 20. it. Off Questy Beast. Oh. That's quite the hit. Now, there's still plenty of action in Brandon's deck. Totally. His deck is not reliant on any one card. Plenty of action, but he did lose quite a few useful lands here. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, he just lost like half his deck. That's yeah. Tasha's is very strong. I think Tasha's hideous laughter has been pretty well underrated by us as a group up until now. I don't agree. Uh, not not that I think it's bad. I think that it's it's good if you care about milling and care about exiling. I think just as like a, I'm going to exile random cards in your deck, it's really good against particularly combo decks. But right. Against like two decks out of a field, maybe. But there's quite a few combo decks in this field. Yeah, I, I think in this field it's good. and I think, But I think it's basically like, there are probably one third of VRDs where it should be drafted. Yeah, unless, I guess, unless you're going mill. I suppose we didn't. We simply haven't had this many like 
straight up common decks. And there's Catelda, right. a card that Brandon's Ooh. very happy was not involved in that because, uh, of course, Catilda isn't just a fantastic uh, star star that counts your enchantments and spirits. It's also mm-hmm. got uh, Catilda's Rising Dawn, I think, on the backside for three white white that gives your creature, you know, plus X plus X flying lifelink protection from vampires. Yes. As well as a, a random land tax to be cheeky. Yeah. Everyone loves protection from vampires. Uh, what happened with that? Is that Helia's Generosity that capped things? Helia's Generosity. So land tax is in the graveyard <laughs> because of something. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what killed the land tax. Also, I'm not sure what that land is. Is that, is that Helia's Generosity? That is Hall of Helia's Generosity. Okay, it's, it's just in the, uh, the, it's the old frame. Yep. The Modern Horizons 2 old frame reprint of the Modern Horizons 1 card. You know. Got it. That's totally reasonable. <laughs> you know how we do things in Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Balance. Ooh. So that's going to clear out both of these creatures. Which is great because it allows for him to cast the Disturb cost of mm-hmm. that card. Mm-hmm. It's really just leveling up which, Brandon. Which Brandon can totally do with his uh, his uh, Sarah's Sanctum that doesn't... Oh, oh, he didn't... Okay. The land tax didn't die. It's just over in the cards that don't uh, do anything area. Okay. So, so Sarah's Sanctum still taps for three. Yeah. Sarah's Sanctum good. still quite strong. Yeah, we have the graveyard, the exile zone, and the enchantments zone. Ah, uh, yes, we did. We didn't have a graveyard before. Was the <laughs> problem? That was what was confusing. Was that there simply was not a graveyard? Yes. So tap for three, four. We're gonna haul back. Presumably the one enchantment. Is she an enchantment creature? She's. Uh, is she? I don't think so. She must not be. So we we haul back the sanctum weaver. Sure, that'd be reasonable. Yeah, she can't be an enchantment creature. She's from Vow. And yep. there's just, like, too many words on that pipeline. Legendary creature, spirit warlock. You don't think we can fit one more in there? You don't think we can fit the entire word enchantment, which is, like, ten letters? I think you'd have to, like, have this creature is an enchantment written below that. It's 11 letters. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you'd, you'd have to... And, and you wouldn't be able to fit that in the text box either. You'd have to, like, write that in the art somewhere. Yeah, you know You'd have to give it the this. pre-release gold filigree of, like, by the way, this is also <laughs> an enchantment. Or just, like, ignore the fact that you have to describe what uh, what Disturb does. Yeah. And just, like, chop that off like they do on the, like, foil M10 cards or whatever. Yeah, on the, like, you know, on, on time Ooh. time uh, time stop and the turn. Oh, that's we have an uh, Oblivion Stone, or Oblivion uh, Ring creature. Everyone loves Skyclave Apparition. Which currently is a three-mana 2-2. With Ugh. flying. Yes. It doesn't have flying. It has art flying. Oh, it has the worst kind of flying. Mm-hmm. Or the best if your opponent thinks it has flying. <laughs> you know what has art flying? Brian Comer from the new set. I've attacked a lot of people in Limited with Brian Comer in paper, and they're just like, because hey, it makes a 1-1 one, one flying spirit. I'm just yeah. like, attack for two. Like, I'll do it every time until my opponent proves that they know what has <laughs> flying. <laughs> what is, what's, the, what's the old, like, it's not Mirage. I think it's... Uh... Whippoorwill? Whippoorwill, yeah. Whippoorwill from the dark. Yes, yeah. green, green for a 1-1 one, one with a, like, four mana activated ability and also not flying. Well, it's a bird without flying. And it's flying in the art. Come on. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Looks dying. like something's getting negated. Uh, it's a pithy needle, I think. Yes. It's some blackout card, so it could oh, be Oh, no, planes. it's Catilda's Rising Dawn is being negated. Totally. Yeah, that makes sense. That art looks just looks just like that. That should be an exile, Catilda's Rising Dawn. Oh, I think that might be... Wait, why is that? Oh, because you disturbed Because it, it was disturbed. Got it. If it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile yeah. instead. That looks like it got exiled. I think that's happening, yeah. It's certainly not at the top of the graveyard anymore. So Steven's sure not doing anything. But yeah. Brandon's also not doing very much. So Nobody's like a, doing anything. Yeah, this is riveting play. That's why we tune in. Brandon has to go check and see which of his lands are exiled. <laughs> I'm going to go make sure that can tell the... Oh, yes. There's two cards there now. Oh, yes, definitely. So there's the Marsh Flats. And the Sanctum Weaver. Cool, they got it. So we're pointing at, Stephen is pointing at the... The illusion creature? The Skyclave Apparition. I don't know why, but he's pointing at it. 
Probably because he's recognizing that he's going to lose to it in, in ah, nine turns. Nine turns, this will kill. Or, <laughs> or maybe his question is: Do you have do you have enough cards left in your library? I guess oh. he has hall. Well, he has hall of heal. It's generous. Uh, he's probably okay. okay. Yeah, it, it would be it would be great if Brandon is literally at zero cards in the library, just beating <laughs> down with a two two, and that is the game. I hope that's where this ends up because that's what I was that's what I was legitimately hoping for with my Oko. Yeah, I mean this is this is an ugly game for sure. <laughs> This is one of those spots. <laughs> oh, he's really hoping for black, I guess. Can't cast that Kaya. That's so depressing. It is great to watch Steven have the restraint to not cast his mana crypt when he's not going to use it this yeah. game. Yeah, love it. You know, he didn't do that before. In this game, it's really saving his life. How do I have Steven win in the last game? He didn't win the last game. He got killed. Oh, well. My mana crypt. Maybe the X is an indication that he's dead. <laughs> you never know. It's one of his two dead eyes. It could be anything, right? Yeah. Anime death face. Perfect. <laughs> so we got something for four here. We've got Questing Beast, which... Uh, that oh, no, not, right. That's not Questing Beast. No, Excuse me. That's that a Satessan Champion and oh, a Floating oh. White. Okay, okay. So we have a Constellation card in play. Yeah. Yeah, Satessan Champion got played against me. Nice. Didn't do anything, but it did get played. <laughs> Sanctum Weaver's getting put on top of the library. Nice. Using that uh, using that white mana, because that would mm -hmm. leave up his Swords to Plowshares. Yeah. Gotta gotta do something with that mana. Might as well put that enchantment on your on top of your deck and then you know play it, draw a card off the Satessan Champion, make the champion bigger. What a good enchantress card that is. It's really powerful. I thought it was a I thought it was one that you had to target, like from that whatever the cycle was. Oh yeah, no, it's not one of the heroic ones or whatever. Right, yeah. But no, it's it's very strong. It's not Hero of Lena Tower or whatever that card yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. Popper All Star. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at my sideboard, it's literally only made up of popper cards, so I'm I'm very on board with these. I love it. Yeah, my my whole deck is like it's like a mix of Mason's deck from a VR a Chicago VRD and then like a CEDH deck. <laughs> right. And Goblin Cannon. Okay, so Kaya finally made it into play. Kaya's here. Kaya's gonna start chewing up these uh these one drops, maybe? I don't Do, know. Does Kaya hit non artifacts too? What is I know she hits one or fewer, but I don't know exactly Just what. Just permanence. Dang. So she's okay. So hitting fast bond is fine. Uh, Exile target non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. Yeah. I guess eventually you hit the exploration and the land tax, but I mean land tax has done literally nothing in this game other than tap for four mana over the game. I yeah, think. land land tax has been uh, Sarah Sigdom's best friend. Yep. <gasps> oh, did you know it's late here? Oh, uh, don't worry. You oh. only have four more matches. Emily's texting me. It's probably very early there. Hello. She says hello. Oh well, it's all her love from us. I think so. Brandon is, probably can't win the beatdown plan, but he can just kill Kaya this turn. Like I don't know, I don't, I don't think necessarily Stephen was wrong to play Kaya, but she's not going to live very long in this game. So Destin Champion drawing another card and getting another. Uh, I wish we had right now. I wish we had a, a total of number of cards in Brandon's deck because Ooh, I don't. Yes. I don't believe Destin Champion is a May ability. And if not, we could be potentially in a very fun race against his deck lives, deck size. Okay, so we have two, five damage coming. Uh, one of them, two of them killing Kaya, and the other is bringing Steven down to 12. Now Steven's drawing up. Uh, his hand is currently a mana crypt and nothing else. Now it is a mana crypt and a planes. Now it is nothing. Cool. So... Uh, <laughs> Steven has all the mana in the world and nothing to do with it. He's dead in two turns. Brandon has more than two cards in his library, so Steven needs an out. Oh, Brandon has lots of cards in his library. I saw him yeah. flip through, and there's like probably 15 there. So Steven, Steven's in a rough spot. Yeah, I think this might be uh, might be curtains for Steven here. Yeah. It'd be nice to see Brandon get a win. I mean, I know he's really struggled with getting wins this whole, uh, whole past few months. I'm not going to lie. I was very happy to win that match against Brandon. <laughs> you deserved it. After that finals. I was like, I got I to gotta do something. Yeah. I got to redeem myself. Uh, I'm still salty about my match against Steven. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can understand that. I would be too. Yep. Mostly I want to replay it a hundred times and see how it works. I feel like I feel like I I don't think I did anything wrong and it sucks. Yeah. I'm sure I did. I want to watch it again and see all the things I did wrong. But Oh, yeah. That's, that's always good. There's the Destiny Spinner. Yep, there's the line through the art. I see that. Adding another counter test champion, drawing a card. Very dangerous. Might as well. That's a Yavamaya. Mm. Yavamaya, Tomb of Yogmoth. <laughs> <laughs> tomb of Green Moth. Oh, 
Mox Emerald. Yep. Not an enchantment, admittedly. Sadly. Lots of green sources here. And then another forest down there. Yeah. Probably dropping his life total by one. Wait, no. No, uh, Fast Bond's gone. We're exploring. But it looks like maybe another land was already played this turn. Now we're having a conversation about it. It almost assuredly does not matter. But uh, it is nice to see that Brandon doesn't lose a life because Stephen was kind enough to exile his Fast Bond. Yes. So nice. So nice. Not that Brandon's life total matters one single iota to Steven. I think I heard Brandon say two two explorers bro in the other room. <laughs> so we should be fine. <laughs> two explorers has been called. <laughs> two explorers resolves. <laughs> I think it's a long enough time that it's not controversial at this point. I don't think it wasn't controversial to me at any point. And it looks like that's Steven says, I got nothing, my friend. And that's a win for Brandon. Very nice. So evening evening things up for his record. So do you want to go play Brandon for another match? Or have you, you two have played already? I've played, I've played right. both of them. You're the only person here I haven't played. Oh, goodness. So it's going to be Steven in here uh, with me and Brandon. Mm -hmm. And then Steven's probably going to go home, yeah, I guess. That seems very reasonable. And uh, Brandon will have to hang out here alone. I think Brandon can carry the stream. I have faith. I'm confident. Brandon, you, know, like, you ready to go down, nerd? The only controversy is how many jokes it takes before it becomes tiresome. Well, so what, what happens with jokes like that is that you hit that wall, right? Where they, they, they go from controversial to okay to make, then, then tiresome. But if you keep making, the, or if you stop for a while and then wait and make the jokes again later, you break on through to the other side. Go ahead. You have time to shop. Sorry, I'm texting my wife. My wife is in Japan where it is noon 30. So we talk at very weird times of day. Like if I wake up early at like 6 a.m., I, uh, I can talk to her at her 9 p.m. before she goes to bed. Dear Alex, how do you type with so many explorers on your hands? From Abdi Lora. Well, Abdi, how do you type without explorers? I don't even know how you get all these explorers on a battlefield without having them in your hands previously. That's why I keep my boxing gloves full of extra land drops. Also deleted. Love, strong bad. Steven, I'm spiraling. You gotta get in here. <laughs> you only got me for a few minutes. That's fine. I understand you gotta go. So that didn't look fun. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, I, um, Man of killed me game one and just, I couldn't. So I had the, um, um, now I had the Trace Puzzle Box lockout. Yeah. But, like, he got enough creatures down that I had to, like, keep playing. I couldn't draw the extra white for the moat in hand. Right. And, you had to, and you had to so I keep playing, keep way. playing. And then, like, by that time, I, I also lost nine to um, Mana Crypt. Right. And then, um, game two, like, I was in a pretty good spot. I Katosh it a lot, but I just ripped a lot of lands in a row. Yeah. And it seemed like you just didn't draw anything that yeah. you needed. I just said, like, if I hit, like, one good walk, if I hit, like, a big Teferi there or something. Yeah, I was, I was in a much better spot. But. Right, you needed you needed some kind of equalizer. Yeah. Other thing, I did something more than time. Kaya, and you know, right. which I couldn't even play for a bit. So. Yeah, Kaya was stuck in your hand with that mana crypt, just like, yeah. well, no, neither of these cards do anything yeah. right now. Guess I'll just leave them alone. Yeah, that's troubling. Yeah, Water. it happens. I mean, he didn't go crazy against me. I, had, uh, I, I didn't realize Destiny Spinner gave those lands haste. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like haste. What? Thank you. It's very important. Mark needs his, uh, his glass. <laughs> he didn't have to go anywhere. No. Someone's got to drive back to Illinois. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's 25 minutes. I mean, literally, it's funny because people are like, oh, you're so far over there. And it's like, yeah, depending you on know, where you're in the city, you're the exact same amount. <laughs> yeah. You're not. But. Yeah. Me, me, my drive is under 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could walk home in 45. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the mana, every game tonight, the mana has felt really bad. Yeah, like, like the three colors is hard, and I three. thought I had enough. I thought with the three fetches and the and the, and the duels, I had enough. But like, I've always been like one color off several times. Because Ran not only do you have three colors, right? But you've got some double pip cards. Right. Right? I've only got, got I've got double white, blue, and double white. Yeah, I've only got two black cards in the main deck. Right, but the fact that you have to still balance the right. black cards, yeah. while also handling the double pip cards. Yeah, I mean, if I get one of the black. fetches, I was going to the black. So I have watery grave, scrubland, and C. So right. as long as it wasn't prismatic. And I have one swamp. Yeah. But, uh... It's tough to balance a three-color mana base in this format. It is, it is. And then the the Narset 
and the moat are the only double pips that I that I had trouble with both of them. Right. At various points tonight. Yeah, it's hard to strike that balance. Yeah. Well, I guess the Tasha's. The Tasha's yeah. too. Yes, there's three. Yeah. That's right. Have you considered simply just playing artifacts, basically, and not paying colored mana for things? Unless you absolutely have to. No, I really haven't. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's not my Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> See, here's the here's the thing. I, I I was I I drafted this deck and I was like, this deck's brain is bigger than my brain. Yeah. I don't know how to play it. Yeah, dude, you played that that game three. That game three in particular, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, I felt good about that game. Yeah, because I was just like, there was a lot of hate coming down. Except the turn that I miss estimated what I should do about Kataki. Right. Where I just got I just time walked myself by right. paying for Kataki. Right. When I should have well, not paid for Kataki's job. So right. Yeah. I should have simply not paid for either of them. Right. Which is what I you know did later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes that's Kataki's job is to yeah. time walk you. So because with 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 both Emery and Welder in play, yeah. I really don't have to pay for things. Right, right. What do you think about this matchup? Um so I mean Brandon says he's he's frightened of this one. Um, and, you know, understandably, uh, there's a lot of counter magic. Yes. I mean, I think this matchup's really going to come down to just Brandon get one of those explosive, explosive starts, which we just haven't seen tonight. I yeah. Mean, they were goldfish and right for him, but, uh... Ooh, an interweb for yeah. Mark. Like, I didn't see any of the Orby, uh, like, the Orby Urza stuff earlier from him. Yeah. Doesn't look like Brandon's deck is going to do anything with this hand. This hand doesn't look like it does. Uh, he's got a fast oh, he's got fast spawn. I missed yeah. fast spawn. Yeah. Never mind. And he's got a solitary confinement hand. So. Yeah, okay. So, But solitary is not amazing against Mark, because Mark's not doing a lot of attacking. No, but, uh, Mark, well, Mark does does attack with particularly right, right. with one creature. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, Blade Steel yeah, Colossus. Yeah. We have a visitor. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that stays downstairs. Is it, did you bring that up from downstairs, or was that up here already? Okay, that needs to go back downstairs. Have Sissy carry it downstairs for you, okay? Alrighty, well, Steven's going to go be a cool dad, and I'm going to be here talking about this game. So, we got a Shell Dock Isle for Mark. Not sure what's under there, but Mark's certainly capable of taking the game along to the point where Shell Dock Isle is very relevant. Got a Mox Emerald for Brandon coming down alongside his many lands with Fast Mon. Brandon's going to power out a Destiny Spinner here. And past the turn, stranding a couple of mana, I'm sure that can't feel good. He's got what appears to be Dryad of the Elysian Grove and that Solitary Confinement still in hand, both costing three mana, neither available for him. Not that he would want to cast Solitary Confinement under these conditions. Discarding a card in the upkeep, not really an option here. Mark with quite a few cards in hand. Brandon down to just two, but with the significant mana advantage. Mark drops a Chromatic Star because he is a bad person who took that card away from me and passes back to Brandon who draws what appears to be a Savannah. Yes, that is Savannah. Sorry, these are not our usual proxies. Brandon printed, brought his, well, I think Sam printed his proxies, but regardless, Brandon brought outside proxies. Destiny Spitter coming in for two and three mana is going to bring down Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which unlocks all of Brandon's no valicate combos. Regardless, extra land drops, not super useful for him here either. Again, just hanging that solitary confinement there in his hand. Not much else. Just a couple of two power creatures ready to go to the combat step. Mark's going to need to do some work to find something before he is clocked out in four turns. Another island, all blue sources for Mark. He's going to go ahead and transmute that muddle the mixture. Going to go find a two drop. We could be seeing a time vault here. We will see time vault. That perhaps means that Mark has the other half of the time vault combo in his hand, ready to execute. Everybody happy? Understood. Mark just uh, Destiny uh, Spinner's rude. Destiny Mark. Spinner's rude. Mark just muddled up a time vault. Right. Uh, Brandon just has solitary confinement and whatever he drew in hand. Okay. Yeah, Brandon doesn't have a lot of main deck answers. No, he does not. Brandon's main deck is very like, I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. And F you if you can't understand me. Right. It's the, the angsty teenager main deck. Same as yours. Yeah, just like mine. Except yeah. mine kills you. Yes. Outright. Brandon has to like attack you multiple times. Concept I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Except, you know, last VRD, but whatever. Whatever, yeah, I love. Whatever. That was a different person. Yeah, I mean, he might have Swords main deck, but I'm not even sure on that. Let's take a look. Yeah, we'll hit the mark on that. 
Oh, they're not. Never you, mind. You can pull by. He's pinned it. If you go, if you pull up the. That's a lot of work. Yeah, I, pull <laughs> no, I, I can pull up the Discord here. Oh, if dis if Discord's open on that computer, that's great because it's not open here. I saw announcements earlier, so it might be open. Okay. Yeah, I saw Max. Brandon, considering the attack here, going to go ahead and swing for four. Not going to go ahead and activate the Destiny Spinner here. Brings Mark down to, I don't think 14's right. You can come in, Maddie. And he's going to go ahead and drop the solitary confinement. I think Mark should be at 12. What's up, baby? Can you, can you help me find Maddie here? I will here in a moment. I'll remove it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll find her off in a moment. Find your way and ask Mark if his life total's right. That would be great. Brandon playing down the solitary confinement here. Mark taking it a moment to pick it up and read it. Brandon probably taking this moment to play Solitary Confinement, knowing that Time Vault is in his near future. Yeah, there is no main, main deck answers at all. No main deck answers whatsoever out of Brandon, so he'll be relying on cards like Force of Vigor out of the sideboard yeah. to get him out of situations. He's got, like he's got a good board selection. Yeah. Yeah. Mark taking a look. Mulling over his sideboard options. Or not his sideboard, his, his hand options here. I heard Brandon say sideboard. I don't understand what it's like to have more than like two cards in your sideboard. I was very proud of my sideboard this time. That was uh, my one I felt my sideboard was very strong. I'm very proud of the three cards in my sideboard. One of them is a companion. Yeah. The other two are Echoing Truth and Pact of Negation. <laughs> I have some other cards. Yeah. I have a Yawgmoth's will that I don't play. I'm not yeah. playing because it's not good. <laughs> your Pact of Negation kids my ass. Pact of Negation <laughs> is so good. Urza coming down here, bringing a construct with him. Mark not quite ready to. Pull, pull the Time Vault ripcord yet, seeing that solitary confinement and wanting to constrain Brandon's resources a little bit. Brandon, with no enchantresses on the battlefield, going to have a little trouble keeping up with that. Right. Not totally sure what the plan is. Does he have Hall? He might have Hall. He doesn't have Hall. I don't see Hall there. So no Hall to go with the confinement, though. That is quite the combo. Yeah. Brandon doing some very strong rearrangement. Yeah, so... My original plan was to go with the Jeskai Walkers, but I was afraid the same thing that happened that happened to the Ashbur is that without green, the three color Walkers decks just feel a hair slower. Yeah, like you want you want the Oath for the fixing for the for the correction. You want the bird stuff like that. Yeah, like, I think you need some of the the early mana acceleration. Yeah, I mean, like I can do it. I could do of my three mana Walkers. I could do turn one all of them but nurse it. Right. But I had to have um, mana crypt, mana crypt, and interplanar beacon. Right. Your player beacon, I think, is fantastic because yeah, that could because you can color this into two colors. Mm -hmm. So, Brandon also skipping his draw step here. I think that's very relevant. Going to go ahead and animate that temple garden with the destiny spinner and go ahead and smash. And that is a five land because he has two over there, and then the destiny spinner is an enchantment herself, and the dry is an enchantment. Brandon a little bit under the gun here. He's got the solitary confinement, but not for much longer. Oh, four. It? It be it's four. four. Four is correct. Four is correct, right. The land, I was counting the land. Yeah. All right, Destiny Spinner doesn't make it a enchantment. Yeah, I don't think so. That would be a little bit of a discount. Elemental, yeah. Right. So, yeah, if you... Trample and haste. Man. Trample and haste, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Mark going to drop Time Vault. And drop Key. Manifold Key. So Mark can take any number of turns at any time for any reason. Mark will do so. I'm going to go wrangle my children. Eric. Cool. Good seeing you. Good to see you. All righty. So Steven is going to go home and be a family man. And I'm going to stay here with you and cover the rest of this game or this match. Hey, Crambler. What's up? You missed two of my matches, but I got one more to play. I won them both. It was good. Blew people up. Thanks for the follow, Crambler. Much appreciated, my friend. We love those metrics. So Mark here in the middle of taking infinite turns, but he does have that solitary confinement on Brandon's side to deal with. Now, at some point, he does have the option to stop taking turns if he wants to. However, he's going to go ahead and... Fabricate. I want to say we're casting Fabricate here. We're going to go find something. 
what could Mark be going to get with Fabricate? Well, I suppose we'll find out. But let's see if we can do a little predictive text. Does he have a way to handle? There will be a VOD, absolutely. And I'll, uh, so, so make sure you check back on this channel. Um, or alternatively, just wait for me to get home and link it to you. You know, either way, your call. Both are possible. We uh, we had quite the late. We had we had quite the start. We were gonna start earlier, but we started pretty late. So we're still going. Brandon is pointing at Mark, saying, <laughs> "I don't know." Brand nonsense is being said out there. Brandon Brandon is entertaining the youth of America here. Some young people out there with us this tonight. And Mark is desperately digging for some way to handle this solitary confinement in a hurry. He does have to show it. It is Tree of Tales. Oh. Now, he can't Oko that because it's neither artifact nor creature. Okay, don't just type Oko there. And Oko can't exchange for solitary confinement, so that wouldn't help. Manifold key untaps time vault. Sheldock Isle, Winter Orb, okay. And at this point, Mark may be comfortable passing the turn and letting Brandon bleed his hand out off of the note. Mark's gonna go ahead and uh, tap the Winter Orb for with Urza. And since it is a continuous artifact of the days of old, it's gonna go ahead and let Mark untap his lands there. Oh, somebody's tired out there. I understand. I'm tired too. If I was a young person and I were this sleepy, I would probably cry. But I'm wearing my shirt that looks like pajamas in this time. Oh, Teferi. Now, can Teferi phase out the confinement? Teferi, Master of Time. What does this card even say? No, it phases out a creature. That doesn't help. <laughs> and Teferi's ultimate, of course, not... Something that really helps Mark here because Mark can just take as many turns as he wants and draw as many cards as he wants. Mark is passing. Mark is passing the turn. Brandon says, what's happening? Didn't you tap time ball? And Mark says, no, I just left it tapped at the beginning of my turn. Brandon goes ahead and untaps his emerald, his temple garden, and his... Riot of uh, the Elysian Grove. How many cards does Brandon have? Well, we'll never know, but because Brandon threw his solitary confinement into the garbage. My guess is that it was either one or zero. It looks like it was zero, and Brandon extends the hand. That's game one to Mark. A nice, solid victory for Mark here. Brandon did not find the answers he needed here, did not have a powerful card in his hand. But Brandon's got quite a number of cards in his sideboard that I think could be relevant in this matchup. Cards like Force of Vicar. <sighs> cards like Sleepy Time for Levine, geez. Um, I can't tell what half of these are because Brandon has used weird proxies. And I'm tired. That's a Monastery Mentor. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's what we're looking for. Come on, laptop. Show me Brandon's deck again. Okay, Brandon's sideboard has such heavy hitters as Council's Judgment, Force of Vigor, Mycosynth Lattice, uh, to go with, of course, the Karn. Swords to Plowshares, Pithing Needle, and Skyclave Apparition. So Brandon's got some, and sword, uh, swords for the, did I say swords? Swords for the Colossus. So Brandon's got a pretty uh, interesting suite of answers. That's a ghostly prison. I don't think Brandon wants that. But Brandon's got quite a few interesting cards here. Meanwhile, for Mark... Mark put his deck list on tapped out because he doesn't like it when people can read it. 
Mark's sideboard has uh, Carpet of Flowers, not relevant. Compost, no. Curfew, Popper All-Star Curfew. Popper All-Star Fade Away. Uh, tranquility. So Mark's got Tranquility in his sideboard. That's pretty good. I feel like that might make Brandon pretty sad, but we'll see. I'm just going to start looking at Mark's main deck just to sort of calibrate my brain for our matchup. Well, he's got counter magic. I don't like that. See, I'm an all-in combo deck. I don't really want to deal with interaction. Stupid. I hate interaction. Why interact when you can just act, right? It's like five letters shorter. It's so much better. Faster to do. I don't know what Brandon's talking about, but he is not taking it. I don't know what, what it is, but there is a card that he is vehemently not taking it out. Why interact when you can sit at home on your computer? Hey! <laughs> is that a you hyphenated, or is my clinical depression overtaken your account? Okay, so Brandon's put all the cards we're talking in. So Muddle, Karn, and something came out. Everybody thinks they can just show you the cards for a quarter of a second, and the commentators will say them all. But that's not true. We won't. We can't read that fast. Interaction has gotten you nothing in your life. I feel like I might be, I, I feel like there might be evidence to the contrary. Don't know what that would be, you know. Mm, hard to, it's hard to say. Um, but we're going ahead and shuffling up for game two here. Chat came untethered from this display here. I'm going to retether it here. Come on. There we go. Be good, OBS. Be cool for like one second. You know, it's, I'm, I'm glad that we could have this just sort of ad hoc random stream. I'm going to finish my pizza, if you don't mind. Because I could really use some calories in my body. Offset the whiskey I drank earlier. Interaction has taught you a lot about snails. That's fair. I think we still have leftover pizza. If you can make it here in time, I know you're a few states away, but... Only take, you know, a long, long time. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you were here, you'd have pizza. Come to St. Louis. We have pizza. Don't come to St. Louis for the pizza now. Okay. Oh, this is my moment. None of the locals are in this room, so it's finally time. Folks, if you come to St. Louis, the locals are going to try to take you, to, to convince you to eat pizza from a place called Emo's. Don't. Emo's is a trap. Um, Emo's is made with Prevel, which is not cheese. It is, I think, plastic and maybe hemp. And not the good kind of hemp, the bad kind, the boring kind. Uh, Emo's is very bad. It is a flat, hot, tasteless cracker topped with bad rope cheese uh, and non-fresh ingredients. And it's a circle cut into squares for no good reason. It's the worst. Don't get Emo's. There. I just saved you some heartburn. Literal, literal heartburn. Now, for any St. Louis residents in the chat, too bad you're not here in this room with me. I can say anything I want about bad St. Louis pizza. <laughs> Popular in the St. Louis area, Prevel is rarely used elsewhere. Why do you think that is? Why would that be? All right, out of my morning talk show routine, Marcus played a pathway versus Brandon's Caracas Zorin Orb. Brandon dropping Scythus, of course. Mark is going to say, it says, I'm going to read your enchantress here. It's a 1-2. Scythus harvests hand. It's a 1-2 for green-white legendary enchantment creature, Nymph. And whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain a life draw card. It's like when Chicago people want people to try Malort. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly like that. It's exactly like that. Except I kind of like Malort. Um, but I also drink Fernet Bronca straight, so, you know, I'm not normal. 
I'm not a bartender either. I've never worked in a bar because that's the, the other reason. Mark just with the manifold key. Brandon dropping down the Sanctum Weaver. Going to bring him some more mana. So that's going to give him access to more mana. Brandon's going to draw a card off of the Scythus trigger. And I don't think he's got anything else to do. Brandon, or Mark is going to go ahead and miscalculate the Sanctum Weaver. Brandon's thinking. What is he thinking about? To be fair, I had Malort one time and I had already been drinking. So maybe I don't like Malort. I guess I don't really know. Yes, that's that down there. Yes, Brandon, that's correct. That's still up there on the stack because you get your draw trigger when you cast the spell and then it's countered. You wanted to find a $50 bottle of Malort. Well, okay. The thing to do then is to bring multiple, I don't know, $10 bottles of Malort and just tape them together. Don't don't tell the other guys I said this was, a good, was what you should do. Just do it next time you come down here. Brandon looking into playing Flickering Ward, going to drop that down. And Mark's going to read it. <laughs> Flickering Ward, of course, costs just a white. When you play it, you choose a color. or As it enters, you choose a color. The enchanted creature gets protection from that color. And that effect, notably, does not remove Flickering Ward. So you can pick white. You are allowed to pick white. I know it doesn't say that on the card, but it was eroded like cards like White Ward to allow you to do that. Now, hmm, is it time to soapbox about a bad card? It might be. I don't know if Brandon considered Ice Age's fine line of Scarab enchantments for his deck. But if he didn't, he's probably sane, and that's a good idea. Looks like he might have drawn Sarah's Sanctum here. Pretty darn good, if you ask me. To be fair, we need to be a bottle of more with a $100 bill right after <laughs> That sounds about right, Swifty. Swifty, I heard you had some exciting matches last night. Sounded like fun was had. I hope you're feeling good about your uh, your boggles. It looks like a sweet list. I mean, I'm into anything that has ethereal armor in it. I think it's very cool. I'm surprised you and Brandon didn't overlap more than you did, but uh, but it sounds like there may have been some agreement, some sort of illicit, well, not illicit, it's to some sort of totally legal agreement. Brandon dropping the Crucible of Worlds down here. Does Brandon have Wasteland? Does Brandon have Strip Mine? I legitimately do not remember. Brandon has, I mean, he has a uh, Horizon Canopy. And he has Fastmon. And he has Courser. So he can draw his deck. You tried so hard to make deck that got value from Green Scarab when you were a child. Yeah, didn't we all? There may have been a beast treaty he made once you made us. Yeah, he was uh, he was in here talking about that earlier with me. He said you you had you had a little bit of a confab and said, well, I'll leave your ethereal armor alone if you leave my this you know my enchantresses alone. Oh, it seems like seems like it worked out for both of you. You both seem to have gotten what you wanted. <laughs> Mark and I made no such treaty, and to be quite frank. I don't think either of us ever considered that that was an option. <laughs> we just spent the entire time giving each other anxiety about every single pick we made. <laughs> Literally drafting like artifact combo decks next to each other. <coughs> I think Needle on the table. Mark going to go ahead and Growth Spiral in the Urza's Saga in his hand. Saga on one. Do you have a counter spell here? No. Doesn't sound like it. I hear Brandon saying he's going to do something. Sounds like he may have been digging for a two mana counter spell. 
Sorry, I just looked at the sheet and I was reminded that somebody took ceremonious rejection. A card I'm not excited about playing against. And I got sad. They also have Prismari Command, that same person. That's so bad. I remember you were saying that, yeah, that you were thinking about a PO list. Yeah, I cribbed I cribbed some of this from Mason's draft, one of the Chicago drafts that y'all did, that Mason did, and uh, some of it from a CEDH deck, and some of it just from the depths of my full-on nonsense brain. So, Brandon, going to go ahead and swing in with the Scythus for a decisive one damage. Just absolutely getting in there. Or is the Saga up to two now with the ability to make a Construct here? Mark seems to be in okay shape, although something is needled. A card I'm sure Mark and his Urza Saga were quite unhappy to lose to Brandon. It's a weird needle. It's like a secret layer needle? What the heck? Is it from Innistrad Double Feature or something? Looks weird. I don't know. Hard to parse. I find it interesting that no one has tried to draft like any of the uh, the Walking Dead cards in the VRD yet, as far as I know. Maybe someone has drafted Rick Steadfast Leader and I missed it. Or perhaps I should have drafted Lucille, but uh, you know, I think I'm good. I think I'm okay. I wonder if I wonder if any of those weird cards will ever be good enough for VRD. Like I'm sure we'll get well, I'm sure we'll be playing with some like Warhammer 40k commander card at some point. If cards like Maddening Hex keep making their way into our format, which by the way, Maddening Hex, dang, that's a card. Very interested to see how that performs in a couple of drafts like now. Right now, let me pull that up even though it's not even related to the game at hand. Maddening Hex definitely in intended for a multiplayer game. You know, legacy and vintage legal, probably not good enough in those formats, but the idea that whenever they cast a non-creature spell, they take between one and six damage, and then you attach Maddening Hex to another one of your opponents chosen at random, chosen at random, a thing that if you don't have another opponent, you can't do. So it just stays there. Very cool tool for the mono red decks. Hyphenated, did you draft it in five? Somebody drafted it. I think it was you. We've got Infinity next year, and I'm sure some of those goofy cards will get drafted. I, for one, will be looking for somewhere to put Saw in half. You did draft it. Okay, well, I'm very excited to hear about how it does slash potentially watch the matches if I happen to be online at the right time and people are amenable to me watching. Just because as, you know, someone who loves this format very much which I think many of us do. I'm very interested in seeing how it performs. I just, I just think it's cool. I think it's fantastic when people, you know, find these cards that are just wacky and wild and they just say, hey, I'm going to play this and it's going to do something. Always happy to see innovation in this format. Really carve out a niche for it that is not fit by any of the other, any of the other uh, formats out there that are commonly played. I think is awesome. The format is really cool. There are absolutely sweet eternal witness things you can do with Saw and Half. There's there's got to be something in this format that I can do with Saw and Half. Um, I know there are people in in the CEDH community doing things with Saw and Half. Uh, I'm the, one of the one of the best things I saw with Saw and Half was just Dockside Extortionist, right? So you just you just kill your Dockside Extortionist, make two Dockside Extortionists. Sure, they're you know, they're 1-1s one instead of 1-2s, but that doesn't matter. They still make a crap ton of treasure when they come in. Mark bringing down Tezzeret. He's got the Manifold key. He's going to go ahead and search up, presumably, the Time Vault. I think he is out of mana this turn, though. Are there any straight-up infinite combos with it? Well, if you're... I mean, I don't know. I would have to... Uh, Cobblepot on Twitter had a pretty good thread of CEDH playable interactions with uh, a sign half. I'd encourage you to go check them out and see what uh, what they had. I don't remember all of them. But that was the day that I was writing my commander newsletter of like fun and silly things to do with sign half. A friend of mine suggested mitotic ooze and so things of that nature. I, I picked reef worm. 
uh, or uh, Orzov Pontiff, I think were some of the cards I wrote about, just like goofy, fun things to do in low mid power EDH. But uh, there's got to be something wild. It was uh, well costed at three, right outside of like Spellseeker Isochron range. Very important that it not be usable by those cards. Ewit grabbing back Saw on another card. Yeah, Ewit does that. Archaeomancer does that. There's a few different options for that, which I think is great. Mark went and got the Ratchet Bomb. Go ahead and start targeting some of these one drops that Brandon's playing with. Of course, Brandon can return that Flickering Ward to his hand at any time for just one white mana. Brandon going to go ahead and drop Planes here, looking at casting something. Interesting that he would be willing to tap both of his remaining white sources. Uh, he's going to go ahead and... Ah, okay, he's going to pick up and recast Flickering Ward. Gaining a life, drawing a card off of Scythus. Nice to have White White draw a card on the battlefield. Always good. Looking for something to stop the pain of Tezzer. Could go ahead and cast Crop Rotation, making the interesting play of sacrificing Sarah Sanctum. I suppose he does have Crucible of Worlds in play. Mark made that same remark, I think, saying, oh, he's sacrificing the Sanctum, eh? And Brandon pointing to that Crucible and saying, yeah, that's fine. What are you going to do? Tick up your Ratchet Bomb three times before I replay my Sarah Sanctum? Probably not. Hall of Heliath's generosity comes down. Goblin Dark Dwell. Ooh, Goblin Dark. Goblin. Goblin Dark Dwellers. Now, does Goblin Dark Dwellers exile the card? Goblin Dark Dwellers. It does exile the card. So you will have to stop. The fun do stop when Goblin Dark Dwellers walks in. The party does stop. But... There's still some some positive potential for, you know, Terror of the Peaks, Pandemonium-style ETB nonsense, Warstorm Surge, etc. Argothian Enchantress coming down. Brandon going to go ahead and tap that. Sarah Sanctum, pick that ward up, put it back, gain a life, draw a card, draw another card. Yeah, you get quite a few triggers. Right, you get the original trigger, and then you saw it, and you get more triggers. And if you use it to play Saw again, you get, I guess, another... You, you, you gain another trigger, which is wild. And don't forget that Saw and Half rounds up, too. When I first read the card, I was like, this has to round down. So, you know, you can't do E-Witch shenanigans quite as well because it won't leave the tokens behind. And I read it again, I was like, oh, no, of course it rounds up because why would it be bad? Why wouldn't it just be great? Taking up Urza's Saga to three here. Going to go ahead and tap it in response. Making a colorless. Mark off to find a one drop or zero drop artifact. Zero or one cost exactly. No no colored mana, folks. Just can't get Darksteel Citadel. Does not have that zero in the upper right-hand corner. Mark is going to come be disappointed. Mark is on his way into this room to be disappointed. Hi, Mark. Are you here to be disappointed? I'm absolutely verifying that mana cost is different than mana value. Yes, you cannot get that card with that card. Thank you. <laughs> Mark has been duly disappointed, but of course, he mostly knew. He was just coming to double check that he could not do that. Because Darksteel Citadel does not have a mana cost, and Urza's Saga is acting asking about mana cost, let's pull that up, actually. Urza's Saga. So the third chapter on Urza's Saga lets you search your artif library for an artifact card with mana cost zero or one. And that's not just mana value zero or one, that's exactly a zero or exactly a one. Now, of course, Darksteel Citadel has no mana cost, so cannot have mana cost zero or one. Mark will instead get Chrome Mox. Will he be imprinting something? Yes, he will imprint that, whatever that is. Mark has imprinted a card. Is that Fade Away? Is it Curfew? I could not for the life of me tell you what that card is. It's one of Mark's weird pauper cards. Mark, what is that? It's not Dow's. 
I know what DAOs looks like. Unless, of course, it is DAOs. No, it doesn't look like DAOs. It's definitely from Mirage, right? It's Fade Away. Okay, I got, I got it. I got it. It was Fade Away. It's from Exodus, but we're close. <laughs> I'll put Fade Away up on the screen for everybody. Fade Away, of course, the... Uh, Mirage, you're close. You're close. It's from Tempest Block. But it is Jeff Miracola, so I can see why you would think it would be from a Mirage Block. But Jeff Miracola, a Tempest Block stalwart. Did Jeff Miracola have art in Mirage Block? Let's just go ahead and... You know what? Cart cards are being played. Mark has Time Vault. Mark popped that ratchet bomb, getting rid of some of those ones, the Pithing Needle notably. Mark is going off with Time Vault and Tezzeret. Yes, it was from, from our time back in the day. Mark has decided to go off with Time Vault and Tezzeret. And of course, building up Tez to that pot potential alt, Mark has a Dark Steel Citadel, a Chrome Mox, a couple of potential attackers, draws the Blight Steel Colossus, which of course eventually he will be able to cast. Mark just says, I'm going to take all of the turns. Shell Dock Isle, slightly shortening Mark's potential lifespan, putting some cards under that Shell Dock Isle. Will he show us what card he gets? No. He will show us that it's a Time Twister, but inadvertently so. So Time Twister giving Mark even more of a lease on life should he choose to use it once he gets down to 20 cards or less in library. Or if Brandon is already there, which I don't believe he is. So once somebody gets to 20 cards or less in the library, Mark can, of course, use that Hidden Away card. And Brandon is just going to pick up his library and say, gosh, I wish these cards were in my hand, but they're not. I do like looking at them, though. And Brandon is going to say, well, I don't have Force of Vigor, so I can see it. And Mark's going to take this one down, too. Oh, very nice, Mark. Well done. Mark going up to one and one here. And that means that my time in the booth for the evening has ended. And I will be stepping into the hot seat. Currently 2-0. You know, no big deal. But I may be the greatest hope for St. Louis so far here tonight. I'm our only current 2-0. And, oh. and uh, as soon as Brandon hops in here, I'll hop out. But I don't want to leave you with nobody. So I want to go ahead and take a moment to talk about Painlands. Folks, if you're playing in a VRD and you're not considering the original Painlands, I think you should. Let's take a look at a pain land real quick and talk about them. Let's take Yavamaya Coast as an example. Actually, no. Let's do one better. Let's take a look at my favorite pain land. No, no, no. Not any of these printings. The Ice Age printing of Sulphurous Springs. There's a couple reasons why you should be drafting these cards. First of all, no more pesky wondering about whether or not you should put it into play tap or untap, lose life or not lose life. You can just put it into play. No must, no fuss, no frills, just a land directly into play untapped. Second, it taps for colorless, free of charge, folks. You can just go ahead and tap it for colorless. Goes great with any thought not seers or matter reshapers or reality smashers you might have in your uh Finals, second place VRD7 deck, for example. Not that I played Sulphur Springs, but I did play as many freaking white pain lands as I could get my hands on. And second of all, it's a great way to splash at a low, low cost. Now, of course, these aren't fetchable, but while other people are spending their high picks on fetch lands, you can go ahead and just take action cards and then draft these on, like, pick a thousand because nobody drafts them. So... Before jerks like me start drafting your pain lands higher and making these more of a valuable commodity, because realistically there is a ceiling on them and the ceiling is probably around like pick 25, 20, pick 20, pick 25, they're still very good. And you should play them. You made proxies of these where you edited the text box to have color gradients in the background? That's rad. Sulphur Springs kind of has, it's got like some crap going on in the background here. Let's take a look at something that isn't Sulphurous Springs, though. Let's take a look at a Darkar Wastes. Does that have anything going on in the background? Are they waiting for me to come out? They should know. I can't come out. 
Pinocchio Ways kind of has blue and white in the background. Maybe a little bit. Brushland. Br uh, Brushland will answer it. The correct color gradients for the colors they produce. Right, like like these, like the ones they printed later. Later. See, Brushland's got. Okay, I guess they just all have this kind of crap in the background, huh? Well, they can't all be winners. But look at this Brushland art. Look at all of the work that Brian Lockwitz did on this Brushland art in the foreground, and then the kind of cool misty background with that lone pine tree just standing out there. Brandon, Brandon, you gotta come. Brandon, save them from the Painland Council. We're gonna be talking about Painlands for so long. Also, Pathways are pretty good too. Now, I didn't draft any Painlands. I didn't draft any Pathways in this deck. That's because I drafted like nine cities of brass. I drafted City of Brass. I drafted Mana Confluence. I drafted Spire of Industry. I drafted Glimmer Void. I could have probably drafted Gemstone Mine if I wanted to, but I didn't. Um, I wasted a couple picks. I wasted a pick on Lodestone Golem. I wasted a pick on Yogwill, which I'm not playing in my main deck. So, you know, probably could have taken some Pain Lands if I wanted to. Probably could have taken a Gemstone Mine. Could have even taken a Tarnished Citadel, folks. If you really need a city of brass, but you don't know where to get one. Can't get a can't get a city of brass. I pro probably don't play Tarnished Citadel. It's probably not good enough. Probably just play Forbidden Archer and give your opponent a creature. You probably don't care that they have a one one. Don't play this card. This card's not good. Don't play it, Brandon. <laughs> I'm just gonna go tell him to give the people what they want. Which is not my midsection. It's it's Brandon. Brandon, I'm just talking to the void over here. Yeah. Save, save the people for me. All right. Sally. In here. All right, yeah, we, we we come in here and we and then wait wait. You want to bring pizza? No, oh, I do, but just not. We're good. Hello, everybody. All right. On camera, we have Dick Bag One and Dick Bag Two. No, they oh, Mark and Eric, nice. Ooh, both of whom have defeated me this evening. Listen, I'm no stranger to being two and two. I've gone five and two twice after being two and two. Uh, 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 so what? I don't care. What's up, hyphenated? <sighs> Listen. Do your lands do damage to you? Play Dryad cla Druid class like yeah, I do. This is Sam. She's very cute. She's a stranger and very uncomfortable. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Sam is my partner in crime. Hi, Cody. That means you're liable for all the things that happened during my lawsuits. <laughs> Anyways, Eric is good at magic Mark versus is also Mark. Good at magic. You're all good at magic. You're all good at magic. You all that's got like what, 20 years on me. That's what they want you to believe. 
All right, in Mark's hand, it looks like he has magic cards, amongst which whomst are Oko and lands. Ooh, that looks like another magic card. Oh, looks like Eric's hand contains a Samsung. Tarnished Citadel is absolutely a magic card. See? You can see. He was thinking. He wasn't thinking because Mark is a robot. <laughs> he was executing programs and algorithms. Wait, you guys are thinking? I'm not. <laughs> I'm drinking. I'm not thinking. Am I right? This is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. What is? The setup. This is not necessary. All right. So the big card for... Uh, For Mark is going to be not this card. This is definitely not going to be a big card for Mark. What it is going to be is this. Because if he can take infinitai turns, turns out, good. For who? You know what's going to be the big old Carterino for uh, Ericchio? It's this. This keyboard is wonky as frickin' hell. It's drunk like you. You're drunk. I am most certainly not drunk. Uh, I think Eric just won. So, because he can crack... Yeah. Snap. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Get fucking wrecked. Get fucking wrecked, Mark. That's a problem when you don't have any moxes. You can't accelerate to to defenestrate. That means throw out of a window. What's up, Koday? Yeah. Uh, in a shocking move, Eric has fucking wrecked Mark. <laughs> Just turned him to shambulos. Wait, wait, wait. But you know what Mark can do? Get wrecked. Game two. <laughs> Play Oko. You gotta get the hair dryer out. You better not! You're gonna wake the child. That's fine. I don't care. So, all of those cards that he stole from my deck are illegally purloined. And he will face jail time. <laughs> By the way, Eric, thanks for fucking up my sideboard. Dick. It's incredibly weird. He messed up my sideboard. You're not going to play with the physical card. Oh, we are going to play test against each other. No, we can't. Not anymore. I'll you know why? It. Because Eric is a homewrecker. Eric has always been a homewrecker. 
Always just slinging dirty sleeves left and right. Yeah, I said it. I'm just getting warmed up in the old broadcast oh, just, booth. Just salty, you lost. Three people watching this leave. I don't care. <laughs> Get out of here. You can you can check out our OnlyFans. It's saucy. It's Sausalito like a cookie. The Sam want. What is this? Frog? Hold him like burger? <laughs> That's a chunky froge. <laughs> that is chunky froge. It's, it's not a spore froge. You guys want to see a chunky froge? I can't figure out. That's a chunky froge. You hold like burger. So these boring people are doing boring things with their boring decks. Mark's going to rewatch this and be like, you were supposed to be. Mark's not, <laughs> Mark's not going to rewatch okay. this. Also, he can't make any ex er, expectations on how I broadcast because I am a champion. And champions do what champions do. That's tautological. Davina liked me. Get out of here! <laughs> Look at these people in here. Get out of it. Get out of town. <laughs> here, if you have turn ones like that, you don't need love from the booth. Fact City. You just sit there and look pretty. That's all I know how to do. I look pretty and I talk smartly. <clears throat> You're not too bad yourself, Buster. Oh my goodness, you should <laughs> probably date. This is moving so fast. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd like you not to meet my mother. <laughs> I already have. I it was fine. Two minutes. It felt like five. I, oh. Oh, two and a half times longer than normal time. I don't know how to do math. You okay, Fosh? That's a goddamn fact. Hold you like Chonky Burger. Chonky Burger. <laughs> So, babe, who do you think is going to be the hottest runway model this side of Cincinnati? That's a close one. Who's in the running? I don't run. I don't like it. <laughs> it's not for me. That said, I do love winning. You love winning. You got to get that bell cut. Which one? Or you want to you wanna get the custom. Don't break. Secrets. You haven't done it. Don't okay. spoil the secrets. There's no secret to spoil. What secret? <laughs> secret. All right. It looks like Mark has played cards. No one gives a shit. <gasps> Be nice to Mark. Uh, my name's Mark. I play cards. We love Mark. So what? Okay, I'm going to scry too. Okay. That's my impression of March. March? March? Yeah, March some sounds. You're drunk. No. <laughs> you said that. And it's accurate. The secret I got terrible. <laughs> I will eat your fingernails. No, you won't. I will. No. Anyways. Jail. Mark plays a preordain. It's really cool. I know that card. It's Inventor's Fair. No, no, that that's an island. That's an Inventor's Fair. That's an island. That's an island. Yeah. That's an Inventor's Fair. You can tap it for cards. I'm going to play a soul ring. Uh, Eric's so snappy with the cards. 
You know what? You can afford to be snappy when they're just basic lands with a proxies, with yeah. printed proxies on top. So we've got an Inventor's Fair into a Soul Ring, into a Lion's Eye Diamond, into a Mamoxapal. Well, it looks like we might get the Zerta into our hand right now. Yeah, he doesn't have that little dingle popper. Oh, <laughs> okay. So wait a minute. He spins three. Why did he play the Lion's Eye Diamond? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Turns out Eric's going senile. His brain is rotten mush poop. You know what I'm talking about? It's all the whiskey. I drank it all, so how Fentanyl. is it a... All right, so Mark plays a thing that says, go back to your hand, metal worker. Stop tapping your cards the other way. Oh, it's a curfew, I believe, is the card that says each player returns a creature to their hand. Okay, Crambler, it looks like you're correct. And that you did basic visual appraisal of the situation and we're right so whatever i the crambler was correct he's not dumb or he or she is not dumb they are not dumb they could be but in that instance it was not an indication of dumbitude dumbitude um, uh, now, oh my goodness, what we've got here is a Goblin Welder. If you've never heard of Goblin Welder, then you were not around in 1999, or no one has told you about it since then. Here it is. This is Goblin Welder. It welds goblins. <laughs> It's out of the mic. <laughs> hey. hey, that's a good point. Well done. That's, that's a pretty that's a pretty quick delay. That's it's like a no six seven seven nine. Ooh, 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 he hit a snappy in that room, and then you see the snappies in here. All right, click clack, patty whack. Take a Xanax. I think snack stacks and stacks. Bars, you do bars. I spit hot bars, you know. I take stacks and stacks, five milli Xanax to treat my panic attacks. But what my mental health lacks, I make up for with using humor as a coping mechanism. That's pretty good bars. Get it? Because like Xanny bars. That's the. I actually did. I wrote that rap two days ago. I did it for a TikTok that I never released. The real winner is very probably Eric. His deck is pretty bonkers. It turns out that the reason you want to draft a bunch of mana rocks is companion. Compoignons. Compoignons. Omelette du fromage. Je suis le meilleur omelette du monde. This soir, entier. C'est fantastique. Why does Eric have one of Mark's cards? Uh, are you talking about Oko? Yeah, Mark's cards. Uh, because his Oko turned it into a 3-3 three, three elk? Yeah, get yeeted. I can't really think of something that rhymes with yeeted to fit. Defeated? 
I just don't think that we're ready for the end of the game. Okay. I need to find up. No, it's Oko, not okay. It's a mispronunciation. Okay. It's common. What did you say? O K O. No, as we've discussed, it's not a knockout. The game isn't over yet. I know. She's new to magic. Don't worry about it, audience. It's okay. She's cute, though. Am I right? I'm learning. Who lo- who loves scritches? I'm learning. All right. Who do you who? Now, as a broadcaster professionally, by profession and trade, who is your favorite uh, one? Ever? Of all time. People or cards? I agree. Wow. People or cards? People are cards. What do we do? We should go with this. Thank you. <sighs> so, it looks like they have lands. And... Um, Additionally, there are also planeswalkers. Ooh, pretty saucy. How many sideboard cards does Eric have? At least one. At least one. Wow. He has five. So none cute. of them are none of them are useful. <laughs> Aw. Why? Why? Why not? Who's? He does not have a single basic land. It's very funny. I, I want to play against Eric. <laughs> you can. I'm sure he'd love to. Nobody's going anywhere tonight. I'd love to back the basics then. Actually, you can't do that. Actually, you probably can. You got a bunch of shiny rocks over there. Okay. Babe. I've made my way to cute crochet TikTok. That's not that's Instagram. That's how dare you defile the name of TikTok, which is an inha- just an eminently shitty app that happens to also be how I make the secondary form of my income. Uh by conflating it with Instagram. Terrible. Terrible. All right, so who do we think is going to win here? Mark. Why? Because we love Mark, and Eric is also going to win because we love Eric. That seems unlikely, oh. but let's stick around and find out. Can things end? Oh, well, I guess in three nights, but things can end in the top. They can. Okay. It's not going to happen. Oh. They can. Theoretically. He's <laughs> a pretzel. I don't know what that represents. <laughs> I there's three holes in a pretzel. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that that means it's a three three elk. Whereas whereas that is a construct which is now dead because he doesn't have enough of them. You know how many? Not enough. Range in the top cards. Now, so the real issue with my draft was not having enough stuff to F over Eric's draft. Oh, specifically to, Eric. Well, not even specifically Eric. Just to like be able to deal with that many artifacts. Because there's a bunch of stuff in green and white That destroys all the artifacts that you want to destroy. Now that's what Eric has. And I just didn't I just didn't prepare for I was my my list was very tight. He had the pretzel though. He just had the pretzel. He ate it. Because they're delicious. Now uh oof. Uh, Karn getting both Tezzeret and Manifold Key. That's rougher, Ruski, because realistically, what you want 
is those things to be separate so you can use the Tezzeret to get your key and then use it to get your time ball. And now he has to wait a turn. Did you? Oh, wait. Well, did you draft Voltaic Key? I, wrote, like, I took Voltaic. That seems like a bad idea. What's the <laughs> Of life? No one knows. 42. <clears throat> 4 D2? Mm-hmm. So, on average, 42 with an average of 6 damage from 42. Or is it 42, as in the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Add to two. Add to two. I don't know what that card does. Let's look up 42. I, is that actually a thing? It might be. Let's find out. What to judge? Yes, it is. It is a card. When 42 is put into graveyard from play, return it to your owner's hand. Are you freaking kidding me at it? Sacrifice a creature... Sacrifice force for regenerating country. That's not a good card. Well, you know, I said it. And it's it's there, and you don't you, you don't have to draft it. It's, it's feelings are only a it's little. It's like hurt. it's like a bad rancor. Because mm, it doesn't bounce back to the hand. Um, no, it does, which is why it's like rancor. Okay. But it costs one more. And that that activated a build. Sandwiches. Okay, so what we're looking at here. Mark playing Eric. That's what we're looking at. The Oko seems to be gone. I think... Are we done calling Eric Eric? Can we call Eric Snappy McGee? Snap. The fact that we can hear... <clears throat> Through the doorway, the snapping of the cards. What can who, who can, we, can we hear? Snappy McGee. We can hear Snappy, Snappy, Snappy McGee. Snapping away. <laughs> Just snap, snap, snapping away. I have cards on my board state that aren't lands. He's taunting Mark with his cards. Look at me, I'm a little card man. That's his. That's my impression. I don't know if you saw. I went to see Mark's deck. And, and I was gonna, I was gonna do the pink sleeves, but then I was like, I can't because those are yours. They are. So you know. What? Cool. What card should we look up now? Let's type in butt. Rebuttal. Mud button. Clanger. Very relevant in this. That's how I found a lot of my cards. I was By typing, typing in but? Ran- no, it, yes, specifically but, but random words. Uh, let's type in ass. That's how I got Admiral Beckett Brass. Aerial Assault. Yeah. Spyglass, Assassinate. Assassin's Blade. Ass Assassins. That's double ass. Woo! Ass, 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 ass. Is this game different? I doesn't feel like it is. No one cares. Assault formation, assault suit, ass symbol of the legion, asquatch. Oh boy! Silver boy. Each other donkey gets plus one and a half, plus one I and a half. I didn't know donkeys were like creature types. This is uh, the silver board. The un- unsets. What format would you play the silver board with them? It you basically just draft them in the silver boarded set. Oh, ass whooping. Destroy target silver board permanent in any game you can see from your seat. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's amazing. Although it's a lot worse now that they've decided to start making uh, the unsets not have silver borders. How which I disagree to with. Differentiate badass. <clears throat> Regenerate badass. You have to growl, though. You have to go... Donkey Zombie. I bet if they can hear us from there. He searches the land in search of good 
He wanders the land in search of good ass. I can't read. Three and a half. Well, I can't tell what's happening in this game. Can you? There's a lot of stuff on there. There's a manifold key. There's some dumb bullshit. Is that a whole breacher? Maybe. <gasps> That's mine. Let's look up whole breacher. Uh, I'm going to say that, yes, that's a whole breacher. So, try drawing a bunch of crap, you dingleberry. Give it a, sh give it a shot, Eric. See what happens. Because my boy, Mark, yeah, he's going to make a treasure token. <laughs> All right, I guess somebody just won. Well, Mallory I, doesn't I, look happy. Based on that, Mark didn't. Well, then they, get, they have to be tied. No. Well. Eric won the first match. Not Mark won this one. Not at all. Remember how he was like, he put his head down? Uh, well, because I, Eric won on turn you one? No, that's what happens when you don't update the guy. What do you mean you didn't? There's an X there. Yeah, as in he got freaking dingle hombered. X marks the spot for winning. No, X marks a spot for you. Took an L. XL, extra large. Did you just clasp me? I said extra large. No way. You're the one who made me fat. You're the one who keeps feeding me. That's not true. Yeah, because you left. It's a cool reaction. You were gone for eight plus days. And that is enough for me to waste away into oblivion. I left you with I, food. I ate all seven pizzas, and I had nothing to eat after day three. That's not true. It was. I was famished. There was one day I ate three pizzas. Babe. <laughs> I can't take care of myself. I'm an adult. That's good. Anyways, Mark's going to draw a card now Mark. because that's what you... So you untap your stuff and then you upkeep your stuff and then you draw your stuff. He hit the table, but he didn't... He's not dead. Uh, is that a win? Is that all on the same turn, Mark? That, so he, that's an illegal play. So everyone knows that you can't just keep wonky... Wonkifying all of your cards, because that's silly. I thought you were allowed to do that. Well, as long as you say that you're doing somebody it. Somebody has very to go unclear the rules to here. prison. There's so many judges. Uh, none of real judges, which would be very helpful with all the lawsuits I have against me. Anyways, good what times. Are, what are the levels? Levels of what? Well, they used to have levels one <gasps> through five. Oof. And uh, then r kind of recently-ish, like in the last like five or six years, it went down to levels one through three. And then they said that, hey, instead of paying our judge... Listen, Eric and Mark are going to be way better at explaining this, but also I think that there's a they have a vested interest in not talking about this. So I will make up stuff right now. Which is that uh, I believe that they did Judges Academy type of thing where it's like a separate entity and then they just like hire out judges from a third party. So, what? What? I'm watching him shuffle like that now hurts. <laughs> oh, so you get it. I get it now. Guess what? Those are all proxies. I know, but... But, yeah, you remember when you used to do that? I did it once. And? And then you yelled at me. I, are you telling the internet in front of all of these people, like probably thousands of people watching, probably, that I yelled at you? Did I actually yell at you? Or did I kindly you and stoically wagged your finger? Wrote you... 
a sternly worded letter of rebuke in pencil so you could erase it if it was offensive and said, hey, Buster, cut it out. All right, this is turn one. So Eric goes, Mishra's works. <laughs> Mark's not happy about it. <laughs> this is bad for Mark. Uh, how bad? Real fucking bad. Because Mark plays some dumb bullshit, which is probably Cephalid Coliseum. Let's look that up. Do I know what it does? Cephalopod. Nope, that's not it. Uh, it's yeah, that looks, man. that looks correct. So you can add it island, wa island water to your juice. That's good. But you know what's better? Having five cards out. That hurts. Poost. Not me. Yeah, MTG bot, follow our Twitter. And if you don't, you can die. I made a Twitter just so I could follow. I didn't even do that. Well, I, I did it. I already told you this so that I could like the ice cream cute. What ice cream cute? They. Who's well, they? The, the, the people Them's? here. Or the, it was at the St. Louis Cannabis Program. The himbos or the They vimbos? were like, we hear an ice cream truck outside. Oh. And they ran outside and it was gone. And I was like, I'm very Which, sad for you. I'm honestly. Gonna make I'm gonna racist. sign up for Twitter so I can like this and commiserate with you guys, even though you probably don't know who I am. Seems like a pretty good use of your time. Yeah, I know. Uh oh, uh oh, that Zerda got yeeted. Arima Derchi. <laughs> I said Arima Derchi. Wake up the child. That's fine. It's not my child. Ask the child's mother if they're okay. With no. That. The child's mother is sleeping, probably. No, Shh. not anymore. <laughs> Thank you. That's lovely. It's your boogers. You know what? I pick you, you can pick me. Pokemon, I pick you. <laughs> I pick you nose. Did everybody know that this is the best girlfriend in all the land? Oh. Look, look, she is so soft. I do this. It's the only reason you keep me around. You're very squish. I go squish, and I say, yes, we're good. <laughs> my name's Eric. I have six cards on my battlefield. What's the difference between the Six models? and three? <laughs> Double. Three. Double what? Rainbow all the way. <laughs> You're so silly. No. <laughs> Anyways, Eric is a he. And is at 2 and 0. And Mark is also that. But not the 2 and 0. He's at 1 and 1. Anyways, he's going to take one damage for no reason. I don't know if that's. Anyways, if Eric plays a land, he's going to have to sacrifice that city of traitors. Sack Servo, make a Thopter. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Slap those lands right on the battlefield. That's four mana. He's going to make a Thopter. Tap city. What up, Stephen oh, yes. Pahal? Gone? Are you safe and home? Are the cranky children put to bed? <laughs> Are they snoozing? Anyways, Eric draws a card like he would. Here's the thing about Eric. is Almost every time it's his turn, he draws a card. It's kind of his style. Well, if they're not asleep yet, just give them some whiskey and they'll figure out. Who knows? Uh, Mark got it. 
much in the style that uh, Eric got the match from me, which is that I just needed to draw that next card. I just needed to draw that next card, and I did not. <clears throat> so that was rough. But, uh, yeah, it all played out as we anticipated, which is whoever shuffled their deck better was going to go home with that fatty dub. Uh-oh. Looks like Mark is tinkering. He's getting rid of that. Wait. Oh, it's a Tree of Tails. So it's, that's a Blight Steel Colossus. Honestly, the... <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Crambler. Crambler's, Crambler's cool in my book. Anyways... Uh, so Tinker from Tree of Tales. Let's get that Blight Seal Colossus in play. Sheldock Isle coming down. Mark picks four cards, puts one of them underneath. Exile, doesn't exile the other three, puts them on the bottom of his library. What could it be? I don't know. Probably something garbage. Doesn't matter. Uh, and so I really hope that Mark goes two and one in this, just so that Eric doesn't have an insurmountable lead. Uh, because I would love to continue going 5-2 and two in BRDs until the end of time. Oh, yes. Staff of Domination, which we will look up now, because we're very good at being broadcasters. Oh, no, we're not. Shut, Shut up! up. Okay. <laughs> not great. However, how much mana... This is eventually going to cost Eric enough life that he can only do it for six turns. Uh, because, turns out, Mishra's Workshop, not an effective way to pay for the stuff that it does. And if Eric decides that he's going to play another land to mitigate the costs of this A bullshit, uh, it's not going to be effective because... Reasons indeed. Uh, mostly because he has to sacrifice City of Traders if he plays another land. So that being said, Eric is kind. Eric is still the one with his back against the wall. That Zerta has been countered. Can he recur it? Not a freaking chance, of Rooney. There's nothing available to Eric other than Mark's Time Twister that will allow him to recur that Zorda. So, Mark is firmly in control in a one and one matchup. He has a Library of Alexandria in play, which is a garbage card. He has a Sheldock Isle. How many cards are left in either of their libraries? Nobody's going to count. Nobody gives a crap in heck. So, let's find out. Never. Or we do. That's a plat pathway, so no one cares. Uh oh, that's a white shit bomb. That is a Kiora's follower, which allows him to untap a permanent. Which he can do in response to the Staff of Domination, allowing him to attack with great joy into Eric and for kill to do make. Ratchet bomb, blow up at zero. Is that an elk? I don't know. There's no pretzels on it. You, you're not a pretzel. Oh, no, it was a construct. Anyways, you're a pretzel now. Thank you. Bonk. Oh. Pathways. <laughs> Understatement of the century. Okay. <laughs> Mark loves the Ravnica bounce lands as commons. That's his first favorite lands. Mm -hmm. Then the pathways. Uh, if Eric spell bombs the follower, then his spell bomb is gone. But. That's the best play to do. So, yes. 
Uh-oh, looks like he's playing a card. I know. So, as we all know, Eric, super greedy. Not only in life, but with his mana base. And did not have any red mana ours. Uh, I don't know what the card is. That is apparently a rare one drop that looks like uh, it should be a 1-1 flyer, but isn't that creates constructs. But if anybody in the chat wants to spell it out, we can put it up on the screen. I could look up... I could look up the deck list. You could use your head. Oh my god. <gasps> That's a scooperino. Uh -oh. Eric gives it up to Mark, <gasps> whose Blightsteel Colossus crashes in for a victorious victory. Kiora's follower, a pick that was made for the deck that Mark has to do the thing that it does, did that thing, but differently, therefore, <laughs> great. So, in conclusion, okay. Mark one, Eric zero. Smooch the Reno. So they're both two and one. Yes. Hello. We were hoping to discuss on stream. Yeah, absolutely. About Talk about it. Uh, we were very good, very professional. <laughs> I we you. rarely said anything very suspicious, and yeah. the chat says Words. very supportive, good things about us. Oh, that's nice. That's Anyways, nice. we like talk, chat. talk, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Uh, so we were discussing whether the. You can uh, take this. No, we're being very cool back here and being behind the chairs. Yeah, leaning on the chairs is the cool thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it's a tough thing to do. Uh, <laughs> so we were discussing whether the tinker for Blightsteel that I did was the right call. Uh, the thinking being that Eric was ahead on board and he basically could tap it down and just kill me in three turns. The reason I did it uh, is that I wanted to tie up your mana, right? Is that like, right, I was just of like, course, yeah. I want to just like lock you down and basically leave you with workshop mana only for the rest of the game, mm -hmm. um, which is effectively what that does if you don't yes. top deck out of it. Uh, and if I tutor, I didn't have either half of the combo in hand. Okay. So I was just like, I can tutor for Blightsteel or I can tutor for a Time Vault and then just like uh, eventually get something. Like I had the I had the Fabricate in hand, but that's oh, like okay. super slow. And I'm just like, I don't want to sit here and wait until I have five mana plus... Uh, tinkering away. Like, I need to tinker this turn. Yes. And tinkering into something. I didn't know your deck well enough to know if you ran a by force or something weird. Nah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. I was just like. Sideboard cards. Don't, don't have know. those. You want to maximize like... uh, that uh, video stream? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Full screen casters. How do we do that? Uh, in the lower left. Oh, look at scenes. This. Full screen casters. Oh, God. You're professional streamers here. That. Ooh, and look at that good web page. Looks really great. Let's wow. just let's just go ahead and just delete that. Just just make that gone. Well, yeah. you can just get it out of here. I. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we have chat in here somewhere. Maybe I don't know. Who cares? Yeah. Sorry, chat. I love you, but no. F them um, kids. <laughs> F them kids. So the uh, yeah, just like the the tinker for time for light steel was basically like. My entire approach to this matchup was if I can pr keep myself alive until turn four, I'm 95% to win. Yeah, which so is like, accurate. If I can just like force you to tap out for a while on a blight steal, that right. means that I can last until turn four. That's very reasonable. Like my, uh, when I'm evaluating an opening hand in this deck, what I'm looking for is can I win this game on turn three or before, right? You know, like can I can I present win this turn three or or like I will I'll also keep a hand where I can go off with retrofitter on turn three because that's like yeah. Almost as good, right? Like if I if I can present some sort of lethal lethal threat by turn three, make sure I don't have Rakdos Charm in my deck. But you're probably fine, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I I don't believe anyone drafted Rakdos did. Charm. Did some, I think somebody did? Does, some, does Mason, Mason have did. it? Yeah, Mason has it because he has he has like three answers to artifacts in his deck, and I'm just like super sad about having to deal with it. Yeah, I don't want to like deal shenanigans, with shenanigans, Rakdos oh, Charm, shenanigans, no, and, and something else. Oh, I'm gonna lose to goblins. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. feel dirty. <laughs> I was like, I have that match. Oh, and Masked Vandal. Okay. I was like, Masked Vandal. 
I'm like, I, I have this matchup locked up. And I looked at him like, no, this is going to be annoying. Is he main decking shenanigans? Please tell me he's not. I can't like, imagine. Can I steal game one? Uh, you got game one, yeah. I can steal game one. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, he's a duress as well out of the board? Yeah, he's got duress. He's, he's got, ooh. Duress, thoughts, he's inquisition all out of the board. Or inquisition of thoughts, he's main. But yeah. And reverence silence for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm not concerned. Okay. <laughs> All of my enchantments land on the turn that I want. So that's fair. Look, in this field, I got my two wins out of the seven matches, and I'm happy. If yeah. I go two and five, I'm ecstatic in this no, field. What? No, you're not. Uh, I've drafted three times. In one of them, I went three, four. Uh, so if I can go two, five in this field, I'm great. You think this is a a, that, a a difficult field? Is that what you're saying? Or is it, the I, decks are good? Or I think this field this is field both is good. This field is full of good players, and this field is far more grown up than the field that I went three four in. Yeah, we have we have advanced the format a lot by like mixing these play groups and, yeah. and just like co like co learning, which Basically, I think is awesome. If I could just remove Chicago from the map and just never have to deal with anyone from Chicago again, I think it would make the format much easier. Well, that's what the, I'm saying. The industrial revolution. <laughs> we're just resetting it. <laughs> There's a lot going on here historically. Oh, yeah. Uh, but no, this is a very stacked field. Uh, and as will be VRD8. Yes, which is VRD8. Coming up on January 8th. Oh my gosh. VRD8 is uh, going to so be soon. worse than this field. I'm just calling it right now. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty busted. It's really and, strong. Uh, as you guys just all met Sam. Yes. And, uh, Sam is gonna be the least experienced drafter but just is that so, true because we're gonna have a first time vrd right yeah she's gonna be more experienced Rosa? than than uh no rosa's no. done an online one edb edb has never drafted has he's never done his edb my Here, friend dustin brown the the oh. famous edb from okay well, Judge let me just uh, say this uh least experience in terms of games ma- ah, magic games of magic play sure, yeah, sure, sure, sure because sure, sure, sure. it is in it's in the double digits, but barely. Hey, that's a, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> that's a fact. If you're going to start, fact, you got to start actually somewhere. Actually accurate. Mason does not have shenanigans. He does have ancient Plus. grudge. Uh, yeah, ancient that's just grudge. as bad. <laughs> that's just as bad, realistically. Uh, but yeah, VRD8 is pretty on par for it's the be a good draft. Uh, roughness. Uh, the thing is... Whatever Sam lacks in experience, she certainly makes up for in hours and hours of preparation. Can't street hooligan? God. Yeah. Stop, Mason. No, you know what? No, I, I, I need I think... you. I need you to lose more than one match so that we can go five and two and rematch in the finals once again. Rematch in the finals once again, and uh, and yeah, just just redo the match that we had a few minutes ago. Yeah, That'd and then fine. that the next time. I will uh, have the land come before the Courser of Cryptics. Yes. So yes. that I can win instead. Am I playing this VRD or am I commentating it? On You're playing it. Am I playing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember. I mean, you know what? That's up to you. <laughs> that, that is actually true up to you. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do whatever. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for joining us in for this. I know this was just like spontaneous and we threw the match in and just had yeah. to, to, to play some games. But It was, it was a, a lot blast. of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Cool. Yeah. Good night. Arrivederci. Ciao a tutti.